if you looked at your calendar today, it said August 24th, which is exactly four months away from Christmas Eve. But if you're a fan of high school football, we're going to let you open up one of those gifts early this year. High school football action returns on the Gulf Coast with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week being brought to you by Spring Hill Toyota. Good evening, and we welcome you to the legendary Land People's Memorial Stadium. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corey LeBounty. On the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. And Corey, high school football returns. I am so excited. A lot of people are, are very excited about tonight's action, opening action of high school football, that is. Waited a long time. Sweat equity through the summer is about to pay off right here at Land People's Stadium tonight. We have a great matchup for you. Davidson hosting Daphne, both of these teams. They had a very similar season last year. Both of them had long winning streaks, Corey. So we expect a lot of action tonight. And you know what? Let's get right to it, Corey. It's the return of Corey's checklist. What's in store for Davidson and Daphne tonight? When you look at Corey's checklist, it's going to be very important to control the Trojans in the trenches for the Davidson Warriors, that is. Also, they must maintain momentum. Last year, they got off to a quick start, 21-0 over the Daphne Trojans, and they were able to not hold that lead because the Daphne Trojans were able to come back and make a great football game out of it. And also, Coach Fred Riley mentioned they must steal a possession in the kicking game. Joe Montano is an outstanding kicker for the Davidson Warriors. He's looking to make a difference for the Fred Riley's Davidson Warriors tonight. Now across the field, Daphne, they traveled across the pond. So what can we expect from the Trojans tonight on your checklist, Corey? When you look at the Trojans, they must focus on Daphne. Kenny King has stated it must be one play at a time. And they also must play at full speed the entire game. They can't afford to take any plays off whatsoever. And they also want to establish the running game. If they're able to establish the running game, that will, of course, open up the passing game for the Daphne Trojans. It is electric right here at Ladd Stadium. We're on the home side. Davidson's band is going at it, and Daphne has brought over a great crowd tonight. We're moments away from kickoff. Had a chance to talk to both coaches before the game. Corey, Coach Riley told me for them to win tonight, they got to control big plays, look out for the big shots. Daphne's going to take some. His offensive line needs to handle the defensive front of Daphne, and he said he's got to sustain drives. Also, Coach Kenny King, he's starting his second year with Daphne. He said, and when he said it, I had to chuckle a little bit. He said, I need my kids to line up correctly, Corey. Also, do your job, stay on your assignment, but most important of all, you have to hustle. So if Daphne comes out and hustles tonight and Davidson does their thing, I think we're gonna have a great, great ball game. Weather is absolutely great tonight. A few clouds in the sky, but it's absolutely awesome. 85 degrees, feels like 92, humidity's Slight right there, 66%, and winds could have a possible effect on some kicking coming out of the north, northeast at four miles per hour. You told me earlier, Corey, we had a 15% chance of rain, and you were right on your prediction. So we're almost ready for kickoff. Davidson kicking the ball off. You just talked about Joe Montano. Back to receive for Daphne, we have Mike Franklin and also Jaquan Miles. There's our kickoff. Brought down at about the 15-yard lines on the kickoff right there for Daphne. So that's going to set them up first to 10, right about the 15-yard line as we get action started here. First ball game of the season. Everyone excited about this matchup tonight, Corey. No doubt about it. When you look at where the football is being established deep in the Trojan territory, that's part of stealing in the kicking game that the Davidson Warriors and Fred Riley were talking about to begin the contest. Chance Newman started quarterback for the Trojans, lining up in a pistol formation there. Hands off to Franklin. He picks up some yards, maybe four or five, as Daphne comes out running the ball. No doubt about it. Want to establish the run to the Trojans, and no better person to do that for the Daphne Trojans than number one, Mike Franklin. Six foot, 202 foot junior. He's already been offered by Memphis. He'll be getting the ball early and often for the Daphne Trojans tonight. Takes us to about second and four with Daphne just starting off. And it appears as if we have our first penalty 
of the ball game, Cor. And that's something that you don't want to see a lot of early, but we do have that yellow flag on the field. Call looks as if it's going against Daphne. That'll push them back a couple yards. And we'll replay second down. And one of the things, Al, that you want to do is stay in front of the sticks. You don't want to get behind down and distance, especially early in this game. There's a look at our officials for tonight. Oren Robinson, Grant okay. Baxter, okay. Willie Crabtree, Andre Hudson, Eddie Carr, Tyler Boylo, and Lonnie Eaton. We've already had our first penalty of the night. Newman keeps it, tries to escape. He is forced out of bounds. That's going to take us to third down. Let's take a look at the Trojans' starting lineup for tonight, Corey. We just talked about Chance Newman. He's the senior. Mike Franklin, keep your eye out for him. Also, receiver Jaquan Miles. He has a twin brother, Jawan Miles. He uh, accepted the kickoff return there. And across the front, Smith, Willem, Love, Santini, McLaurin. The Daphne Trojans, they're averaging good weight across the front line, taking us to third down. Third and about three, we'll call it. Pass is incomplete. And it looks like it's going to be turned over with a punt here, coming to Davidson. Nice slant right there that was run by the Daphne Trojans, and it was incomplete. Great defense on the play by Jason Williams. Comes up and makes a huge uh, play, and we're going to get our first punt in the game. Back to receive the punt for Davis and number 22, A.J. Williams. Coach Red Riley talked about it at Mobile County Media Days. Of all the starters he's he lost, all the seniors he lost, and the starters returning, only one offensive player has scored a touchdown, that being A.J. Williams. There's our punt. And it does not, is, is not a favorable for Daphne at all. Doesn't even make it up to the 45-yard line. That's where they're going to down it. And what I got, we'll get our first look at Davidson for tonight. And what you want to see from these Davidson Warriors, there's no more Cephas Johnson at quarterback. The Davidson offense is now led by Tim Johnson, having an opportunity to play the quarterback position. He's a 5'9", 153-pound junior, so it's going to be very interesting to see how Fred Riley utilizes his skill set. First, first and 10 right here for the Warriors as they line up ball on the 47-yard line of Daphne. Great field position for Davidson. In the pistol formation, Johnson takes a snap and met at the line by number 93, Maurice McBride brings him down, Corey. Maurice McBride, big defensive tackle for the Trojans, 6'2", 250-pound senior on the tackle. Davidson line up across the front, the offensive line averaging about 263 pounds. We just talked about Tim Johnson right there on that carry. Uh, Kobe Blunt was brought down by McBride. Keep your lookout for Paul James and Cameron Peoples. They'll be doing action tonight for the Davidson Warriors. And that's a loss on that play, so it takes a second down and about 12. Hand out to the back. He gets close to the original line of scrimmage. Kobe Blunt, number 31. That'll take us to third down for Davidson. And you look on the tackle on the play, Maurice McBride again from his defensive tackle position, making another stop. But again, the Daphne Trojans have eight returning starters on defense, so that's going to be a strength of this Kenny King coach team. That is. We'll talk about that later on. It will be. So we're looking at about third and about seven here right now for Davidson, trying to pick up a first down. Looking over to the sideline, getting the call. Offensive coordinator Ken Boatman getting the signals in to Johnson. Play clock looks as if it has expired, Corey. And there's a flag on the field there. That's the delay of game on the Warriors. We'll take them back five yards. Right now, take a look at the Daphne Trojans defensive lineup there. Rashad Yelding, his father is one of the coaches for Daphne. Corey, also McBride, you just talked about him. Maurice McBride made a couple tackles. Jawan Miles, number 24, that's Jaquan's brother. They're twins. And also Collins, Reynolds, and Taylor rounds out the Daphne defensive lineup. Johnson trying to connect with someone he has brought down. Brought down my number 21 for Daphne. Ty Reynolds Ty on Reynolds. the stop. 
And that's going to put Davidson in a situation where they're going to have to pump the ball also. But with both teams having one flag on each of their offensive possessions, it kind of cancels each other out. You look at the punt situation coming up, Al. Both teams really struggling early on offense. That's right. I did say I chuckled about what uh, Coach Kenny King said earlier about lining up correctly and doing your job. But as you can see, maybe some uh, first possession jitters for both teams. Montano back to kick for Davidson and back to receive for Daphne. We have Franklin. And we have another flag on the play before we even got that off. I'm sorry, that's Jaquan Miles back to receive for Daphne. But let's get the call from the head referee. So we have false start on Davidson. That'll push Montano back five yards, which shouldn't be a problem from here. He's handling kicking duties, punting duties. He was nine for nine last year on all of his field goal attempts, Corey. We talked about him being a very special weapon, and you have to be special on special teams. Coach Riley is very, very high on his kicker. He wants to get this ball end over end to negate any type of return for the Trojans. Daphne should be sitting real good here. Miles lined up at about the 27-yard line. Great punt from Montano. Pushes him back, and he calls for a fair catch right at about the 20-yard line. So Daphne will get our second look at them momentarily. We have an opportunity right now. Let's take a look at Davidson's defense. You spoke about Jeff Marks earlier. Also, Darian Coates, Gabe Johnson back there, linebackers for them as well. Willie Manuel, Cameron Stewart, Zach Anderson. A well-rounded group here for Coach Riley. 20 seniors returning from last year. So not as many as he had last year, but having 20 is a better number than losing 27, Gord. And four returning defensive starters also, Al. Up the middle and brought down by Davidson. Mike Franklin on the carry. He may have picked up one or two. Take Daphne to second down. Tyrese Douglas on the stop for the Davidson Warriors. And what you want to do is you want to see the acceleration when you hit the hole. You don't have time to tippy toe. You want to get have that second burst and get into the secondary. If I recall last year, Corey, our first game of the season, we had LaFleur and Williamson. And there were many, many flags. Hopefully, we won't have a repeat. But we've had a pretty good amount so far. Franklin goes nowhere on that. That's a loss. Takes Daphne to third down. So hopefully we'll get the kids to get the jitters out of their system, get them set up, get them ready, play assignment ball, do what they need to do. And we'll have a good, good evenly played game tonight. Another big stop by the Davidson Warriors. Cam Owens on the stop. Defensive end position, six foot, 176 pounds senior. Doing a good job not letting the Trojans establish that line of scrimmage. Third down in a bundle here for Daphne. Chance Newman in the pistol formation, looking to throw. And he does connect, gets out to his receiver, gets the completion over to Taylor Smith. He will be short of a first down, so Daphne will be punting again. And it's one of those situations where Fred Riley, early in this first quarter, has to be very pleased with the defensive effort. Nobody has really gone for any play fakes and stayed home and made the initial tackle at the line of scrimmage. Kicking for Daphne, Diego Guerrero, and back to receive for Davidson, A.J. Williams. He's setting up right about the 44-yard line. Guerrero gets the kickoff, nice punt. And it is fair caught right there at about the 41-yard line. So Davidson will get possession here. So both teams have the ball right now two times, no points on the board, just kind of filling each other out, Corey, you could probably say. And that's exactly what they're doing now. When you look at trying to look at each other on film these last six or seven months as they're getting ready to prepare, one of the things that I know everybody's preparing for is the heat timeout, and that's coming up at the 544 mark. And there it is right there at the 544 mark. We have our first heat timeout and our first opportunity to check in on the sidelines with Kimberly Dunn. What's up, Kimberly? Hey guys, I talked to both coaches before tonight's game and asked them what they were looking forward to in tonight's game. And both of them said that they were just excited to get this football season started. They were looking forward to a great rivalry and they were just really excited to play against each other. Um, they were also excited about each other's records. And so, as you can see, even from the students, there's a lot of excitement in these stands and there's a lot of jitters on the field, as we could see from a few of the calls that were made um, 
with flags being thrown on the field. So hopefully they'll get those jitters out within this next few minutes and we can see some real good competition for the rest of the night. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kimberly. You're right about that competition. Looking back last year, Davidson finished 2016. Corey had a 9-2 record. They returned to the playoffs for the first time since 2012, but they lost in the first round to Auburn 34-10. On the other side, Daphne finished 2016, had a 9-3 record. They lost in the second round of the playoffs to Opelika 35-6. So these teams kind of had similar paths last year. We'll talk about that later on as well. No doubt about it, Al. And that's very important to know that last year is last year. A totally new identity for both of these teams. And we're going to see as they continue to go deep in this first quarter how they feel one another out. Williams in motion. They give it to him on a little jet sweep. And he is brought down behind for a significant loss, Corey. Andrew Gilbert coming up from his uh, linebacker position, 6'1", 190-pound junior, doing a good job of diagnosing that play, creating a loss for the Davidson Warriors. That's about a five or six-yard loss, so that puts Davidson behind the sticks here. Less than six minutes in the first quarter, we are scoreless at Lab People Stadium. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corey LeBounty, Kimberly Dunn on the sideline. On the field right now, D Davidson with the ball, trips at the bottom of the screen. Little quick bubble screen there, out to number 81, Malik Crandall. Incomplete, Corey, so that takes us to third down. One of the biggest things, Al, is that on first down, you must get some type of positive yards because now, again, you put yourself in third and long. That's something that you don't want to see your football team in. You want to put yourself in second and short or third and manageable. Now when you come to third and 15, everybody's yelling, watch for the pass, watch for the pass. It's either the pass coming up or you're going to try to get half of the yards back and create a punting situation for your team. So we'll call it third and about 15 for Davidson. No one in the backfield as Johnson prepares to take the snaps. Williams goes in motion, and I believe we have another penalty. There's the flag there, Corey, so we'll get the call. Maybe our official's microphone is not working, but that call does go against Daphne, I believe, with all sides there. It was all sides, and that's the situation now where if you're Davidson, you want to try to capitalize, you're right back at third and ten. So back to the original line of scrimmage, third and 10. This is doable for the Warriors right about the 41-yard line. Williams in motion. Johnson looks to connect and misses the receiver. He was trying to get it out to Paul James, number 85, 5'10", 173. Did not connect. So Coach Riley has a decision here. Will he try to go for this, or he will he send Montano out on the field? And it looks like the uh, punting group is coming out. You definitely want to try to flip the field if you're Fred Riley. In that situation, the Davidson Warriors went trips left, and they just had a little miscommunication on their timing. But on fourth and ten, your, your, your best bet is to go ahead and put it on your kicker's foot to try to flip the football field. Back to receive for Daphne. Jaquan Miles lining up right about the 24-yard line. Good kick by Montano. And picked up by one of the up men for Daphne, number number nine. He picks it up, Rashad Yelding. I'm sorry, that's not Rashad Yelding. Wrong jersey number there, Corey. Number nine for uh, Khalil Johnson for Daphne. Picks that ball up. A little short kick for Montano. And you will look at the impact players that we're going to have in tonight's football game. And we're going to start with the Daphne Trojans. On offense, they have a dynamic running back, Mike Franklin. We talked about him being offered by Memphis. He's only a junior, but so far he hasn't got started. And the quarterback needs to get into a groove for the Daphne Trojans, also a chance Newman. He does. Daphne hasn't been able to pick up a first down yet. Franklin on the run picks up about four of five. Just talked about him, Corey. Very quick young man. He needs to get in the hole and get back in there. Take a look back at your impact players again. And you look at Chance Newman, a young man who had an opportunity to take a lot of snaps one year ago for the Daphne Trojans. He's proven to be a leader in seven on seven in the offseason. Just want to see him get into a rhythm, but he'll be able to get into that rhythm as the running game starts to be established. We'll call a second and about five and a half trips at the bottom. Man in motion for Daphne. Newman fakes it and gives it off to Franklin. And Franklin close to a first down, possibly the Trojans First first down, maybe about two yards short here, so we'll call it about third and two. Folks at home may not know this, Corey, but Ladd Stadium installing new scoreboards here at the stadium. 
So we're kind of having to do a lot of our measurables ourselves tonight. So uh, we're just relying on the scoreboard for the clock primarily in timeout. So we'll call it, say, third and one and a half. How about that? That's going to be short yardage for the Daphne Trojans. And that's right where here, when you're in third and short, we haven't seen this throughout the football game yet. It's going to be important for the Trojans to pick up this one yard. It will be. They have not. They have not gotten past midfield. Newman decides to keep it. He gets the push from his offensive line. That line averaging 255 across the front. Most of the Daphne Trojans signaling it. They have picked up the first down. We'll see what the head referee says. And I think he's going to have it by about half of the length of the football. And it will be one of the first first downs of the game for the Daphne Trojans. And he's going to signal it's going to be first down. Just signal timeout. So Daphne picks up their first down. For tonight, ball right about the 36 yard line, maybe 36 and a half. The clock is ticking here. No scoring action so far. And Davidson hasn't passed the 50. They looked up and received the punt on the other side of the 50. So both offenses trying to get themselves together, Corey. New running back in the game for the Trojans, Jay Poe now on the carry for the Trojans that picks up negative yards. The Anthony D, our offense, struggled to block the defensive line right there of the Davidson Warriors, and they do a good job of tackling them behind the line of scrimmage. He did, Poe, 5'9", 205. They brought him in, and he was shut down by Davidson. That's a loss, about a three-yard loss. So Daphne behind the chains again. We'll call it second and about 13 here. And as Poe checks out, you look who checks right back in for the Trojans, Mike Franklin. That's right, Mike Franklin, the junior back, handing it off to him. Up the middle, got a lot of yards there. And he's close to the first down marker, so that was a big run. Daphne needed that. He gets it to it right about the 45-yard line. We have a straight shot here from the press box to look at that. So he's about a yard and a half short. Daphne trying to pick up another first down and sustain this drive and keep it going as we approach the end of the first quarter. If you notice, under two minutes. Newman once again with the quarterback keeper. And I think this is going to come down to the official core if they give him a, a little help on the measurement there. As they're standing I mean, on the directly, placement. right now, they're directly in front of us. And from where he looks like he spotted the ball, looks like they're going to be a little bit short. And it's going to bring up fourth down and probably about one and a half yards to go for the Trojans. Yeah, so we're going to call that no game for Daphne. Decision here for Coach Kenny King in his second year at Daphne. Fourth and about a yard and a half to go. Neither team has made any really significant offensive progress. So nothing really to lose here. You're kind of in no man's land. Too far to punt and too far to kick it. And Newman kicks it on the rollout, picks up the first down, steps out of bounds. That's some good senior leadership right there, Core. Great play action right there by the quarterback. And in the situation with Chance Newman, the Davidson Warriors had to respect Mike Franklin getting the football. He was able to keep it himself, go ahead and pick up the necessary yardage, and move the chains. First down for Daphne, the two consecutive first downs for them as they're sustaining this drive, trying to build some momentum, get some points on the board as we approach one minute remaining in the first quarter, the first game of 2017 high school football. Hand off to Franklin, tries to do a little stutter step and he is met behind the line of scrimmage. Cameron Hatcher Owens on the stop and like we mentioned earlier, Mike Franklin has to accelerate beyond the line of scrimmage. You cannot, against this big Davidson Warrior defense, afford to tippy-toe at the line of scrimmage. You have to hit the hole and get north and south. Second down at about 12 for Daphne. We've seen this happen a few times in this drive so far, Corey. Pick up a first down, lose a couple yards. Let's see what uh, Coach Kenny King comes up with right now. And we've seen that as well, another penalty on the play. And that's something that you will see a lot of across the state of Alabama as teams get ready to play their first football game. False start on Daphne, so it'll push them back five yards. But that, that can happen, Corey. You know, you've been having training over the summer. You've been hitting each other. haven't had a chance to hit anybody else. And you got to get into a routine, into a rhythm. So we, we kind of expect to see a lot of calls in the first quarter. Second and 17 now for the Daphne Trojans. Newman rolls back, trying to connect with the receiver. He places it right there, but it is incomplete. Incomplete for Daphne. So that takes us to third down. 
Newman aired it out to Jaquan Miles, but Cameron Stewart did a great job from his cornerback position and making sure that that pass was not completed. Third and 17 for Daffy. As we have about 19 seconds left here in the first quarter. First quarter has flown by Corey. And Can't believe it. And even with the penalties, Al, that we've right. had maybe four or five penalties, there's still been a steady flow to this football game early. It sure has. Man in motion for Daphne. Newman fakes it to him. There's a lot of room to roll out. He steps and plan and throws, and he connects with Miles for a big gain, and that's a Daphne first down and possibly a late hit. I saw a late flag come in there. And you don't want to have to tack on another 15 yards to the end of that wonderful catch by the Daphne Trojans and Jaquan Miles. But in that situation, you just gave him a little bit too much time as he was able to roll to the outside of the pocket and find his open receiver. Sure did. He caught the ball, went out of bounds, and it appeared as if it possibly could be a late, get, late hit against Davidson as the officials are discussing this down on the field. Beautiful night here in Mobile for high school football. Core, we talked about it earlier, temperature about 85 degrees. And uh, thanks to the big man upstairs, no wet stuff to this, this evening. <laughs> I like that. 24 hours ago, it was an absolute mess. But tonight, beautiful weather here in Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, we were discussing it. Hopefully, that the showers will hold off. And uh, if they did come, they would come early before kickoff. So wait a minute. It looks as if that ball is coming back, Corey. Let's get the call from the official down on the field. We have holding on the offense. And then we have a personal foul against Davison as well. So the officials were getting together to decide how to assess the yardage, there we go. whether they're going to be offsetting. They needed to walk off both penalties right. in order to establish the new line of scrimmage. So that's what we're waiting on right now. So there were fouls against both teams on the play, so it looks as if we're going to repeat third down. And it appears as if Coach Kenny King is asking for one of the officials to come over and say, explain to me what's going on here. Yeah, because anytime you have two fouls, you know one probably was a personal foul, and that's normally a 15-yard right. penalty. The holding is normally a 10-yard penalty, but because the personal foul in that situation, the referees are talking about it too, trying to make sure that they make the correct call also, because this is their first game also, Al. Because as I look at it right now, Corey, Daphne has third and 22, and that was third and 17. So something is going on with the yardage, and I think that's what Coach King is upset about on the sidelines, that he's still giving the official he's an earful. He's actually out on the out. field, he's and he, he wants an explanation, Corey. He does. Because, you know, Al, when you look at a personal foul in high school football, right. it's normally assessed as 15 yards. Holding is normally 10-yard penalty, so with that being said, Kenny King's on the sidelines giving the side judge an earful and now wants to hear from the white hat as to exactly how the yards were assessed in right, the penalty. Right, Because the scoreboard does say third and 22. I talked about that earlier. We're kind of doing some measurements ourselves. But uh, that was third and 17. So I think Coach King does have something to talk about to him. But it's a situation, again, these guys have come out, the officials, this is their first game also, and you want to make sure they always do a great job of trying to uh, enforce the rules on the field. That's why they're out there, but you must be able to explain to the head coach as to why there's a difference in yardage, and that's exactly what Coach Kenny King is asking the White Hat to do tonight. It is. Make sure you stay with us. Light on tap tonight. Having a great time with high school football. We'll take a look at some of the preseason polls that are out. Also, some of the standings from last year, how we wrapped up 2016 as well. And plus, throughout the night, we'll be checking in with Kimberly Dunn on the sideline, giving us a feel as to what's happening, the lay of the land excitement right here at Lab People Stadium. So it looks as if Coach King has given them all he can give, and it's still third and 22, Corey. It'll be one of those situations that Kenny King, after the game, will get an explanation probably from the state office as to why, if he did not get the answer he wanted on the sidelines, he'll get an answer from the state office. All right, back to our action here. Newman lining up, only nine seconds remaining in the first quarter. Third and 22 is the distance to make. Newman steps up and tries to escape the pocket. He gets out and releases it and connects with his receiver across the middle. Number 80, Nick Sedano, 
but he is well short of the first down and the original line of scrimmage. But the clock reads zero right now. So that's the end of the first quarter here. We'll be back with more action with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Don't move. teams. Football, it starts with us in the Mobile County Public Schools. It's a fact. Bullying happens. Bullying can lead to serious physical and emotional pain. But there are some things you can do to prevent or stop it. Stand up for the person who's being bullied. Let the bully know that it's not cool to pick on others. Take action by reporting the bully to a teacher or principal. In the end, when you help someone who's being bullied, you are also helping yourself. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Springo Toyota. Time for second quarter action. I'm Al Whedon joined by Corey Bounty down on the sidelines. Kimberly Dunn giving us sideline updates. And Corey, interesting first quarter. No points and basically no sustained drive from both teams. Yeah, you look at both teams trying to feel each other out. And that's essentially what was done there in the first quarter. You had maybe six or seven penalties, a lot by both teams, but that's expected in the first game. So we're looking right now at Daphne punting. Uruardo punting the ball and Williams back to receive for Davidson as the players flip fields here and Davidson now taking over on offense. We know Fred Riley's offenses over the years traditionally run three yards in a cloud of dust. Last year a little different. He had Cephas Johnson kind of spread it out, but you could kind of sense a little bit, Corey, maybe him trying to get to that, but he doesn't have that big bruising runner he's always had, like Dante Edwards. Williams is a big guy, Blunt's a big guy, but not as big as Edwards was last year. You're gonna, it's going to be interesting to see here in the second quarter if the Daphne Trojans are able to continue to push the offensive line back of the Davidson Warrior, because right now what Fred Riley would like to establish is some sort of running game. Maybe Maybe two or three yards on first down will be very effective. With Davidson having the ball, we get opportunity. We'll try to get their impact players up with them on offense. Hand off to the up back up the middle. He picks up a couple of yards there on the run for Davidson. Number 31, Colby Blunt. We just talked about him. Make it second and eight, we'll call it that, for Davidson. And Daniel Taylor, the weak side linebacker for the Trojans, comes up and makes the stop. And again, positive yards, even if it's just one, it's important to get those positive yards. So we'll call it second and eight for Davidson. Snap is fumble. Johnson jumps on it. He's brought down for a loss. Pushes Davidson back. Bad snap right there by the Davidson Warriors, and Ty Reynolds was able to shoot the gap from his middle linebacker position. 5'9", 195-pound senior, was right where he was supposed to be. Johnny on the spot. Anytime you fumble the football and turn around, you want to see a defensive player in the face of the quarterback. That's exactly what happened. That's right. As Coach King told me before the game, do your assignment, do your job. So Reynolds right there on it. Davidson, third and 21, way behind the sticks. I know Coach Riley and offensive coordinator Ken Boatman didn't plan it this way. Trips at the top of the screen. Johnson taking a slight delay. We may have a penalty on the play. There's the flag right there. Offsides on Daphne. So Davidson gets five yards back, Corey. And that's something that's going to drive the defensive coordinators, Larry Runs and Kenny King, bonkers because <laughs> you can see the football clearly in front of you. And if you can't, you need to go ahead and hit yourself backwards a little bit. Don't give the Davidson Warriors free yards on offense. That's the second time tonight that that's occurred. Third and 16 right now. Hand off to the back. And he's just pretty much trying to contain himself and get a few yards there. So Davidson doesn't lose anything, Corey. Kobe Blunt, the 5'7", 165-pound junior running back, like you mentioned, now taking that workload of this Warrior offense. 
And it's going to be interesting to see if the Warrior offense can continue to push that Trojan in the trenches that we talked about earlier on my checklist. This young man, we've called his name a lot tonight, junior punter Joe Montano. We said it earlier, last year he was nine for nine on all of his field goals, and he made all of his point after touchdown attempts, except for one, and it was happened to have been blocked last year. So he's an excellent kicker for Davidson. One last player getting on the field for the Warriors before the snap. They had a 10, they need 11 to get this playoff, Gore. Appears if Montano is going to take some yardage here with the delay of game, push Davidson back five more yards. And that's something that you can deal with forward. I'm surprised that Fred Riley did not call a timeout in this situation to make sure you had the correct personnel on the field. But if you really trust your kicker, if he's able to get that football and flip it beyond the midfield stripe, you have to feel pretty happy about that situation. So Montano set the kick, standing at about his five-yard line. He's been kicking some beauties tonight. Puts another one up. Good hang time on that. And Miles calls for a fair catch, but I think we may have another penalty, Core. We do have a stoppage from the officials. It appears as if Davidson called timeout. That's what it was. Coach Ray Riley called timeout before the kick went off. Well, it's probably a timeout too late if you're the Davidson Warriors because you already have lost five yards in that situation. Right. They might have been getting ready to lose five more, so you wanted to call timeout, get your personnel right so you don't cost yourself ten. He's really giving the team an earful right here on the sidelines to talk to him about, look, guys, you guys must do your job and must play special team football. That's one of the points of emphasis for Coach Fred Riley that they go over every single day in practice. Everyone. Special team situations situations to where you want to try to flip the field and you can't do that if you're putting yourself five more yards behind the stick. He told me before the game we were down there talking to him he said about a week and a half ago he brought the kids out here they did a little scrimmage he said for two-thirds of them this is their first time being at last stadium so a stadium of this size yes it may be considered old but compared to your practice field at Davidson this is like night and day, Corey. So he kind of wanted to get them acclimated before they come in here and get those jitters and get their emotions running too high. But right now he said, got to stay in check and stay focused. So hopefully Davidson gets it together here. Montano now standing at the goal line to take the snap here for the kick. And Miles setting up right about the 48-yard line of Davidson. Looks as if Dabney's going to have great field position here. If he can get this football going north and south, he has an opportunity for a big return. Miles takes it, and he is met right at about the 45-yard line. They're going to mark it maybe at the 43. Jason Williams, the gunner on the play for the Davidson Warriors, did a wonderful job of sprinting down the field, doing his job, staying in his lane, didn't give the Trojans an opportunity for any type of return. First time Daphne has taken possession of the ball across the 50-yard line or even across the 50. We thought they had a big first down, but that play got called back, which led to third and 22 on their previous possession, Corey. And I want to see with this positive side of the field, if they decide to take a strike down the field on first down, they haven't really tested this secondary of the Davidson Warriors yet. They haven't. Coach Fred Riley said, we do have to watch out for the big play and brought down immediately number 77, Tyreek Williams, the nose tackle. He takes down Franklin, and Franklin's slow to get up, Corey. He did a wonderful job from his nose tackle position. Tyreek Williams, that is 5'11", 270 pounds, created a little turf monster music right there <laughs> for the Davidson Warriors. Second down and about 12 for Daphne. So once again, behind the sticks, negative yardage here for the Trojans. Let's see what they can come up with. Daphne in the pistol formation. Newman with the quick out to Miles. He catches him, and a late flag comes in as well. He gets up to maybe about the 43-yard line, but we do have a flag on the play. Tyrese Douglas coming up from his dime defensive back position, making the stop for the Davidson Warriors. It appears as if that call may be going against Daphne. The official has motioned that way. Corey, it looks like they're about to walk it off here. Let's take it down to the sideline and have another report from Kimberly Dunn. Hi, I'm here I'm here with Davidson's principal. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great tonight. 
How do you feel about how your Warriors are playing oh, so far? They're hanging in there really well, but I think they're doing well. We're going to have to wait and see how this plays out. Well, while you're here, what is something that sets your school apart that the viewers need to know about? Well, maybe our academic program, our international baccalaureate program is a very strong program. Our engineering program, academy is a very strong program. We recruit a lot of kids in for those two programs, and we're really proud of those programs. And then we have a comprehensive athletic department. You know, we cover all the sports, but this is, this is an enjoyable sport, football. Yeah, so you're really proud of this team out here tonight. I am. These kids are doing a good job, playing well. We lost so many kids last year. You know, we, we graduated 27 seniors, so these are young kids out there, and they're playing their hearts out right now. Yeah, it's an exciting game for both teams. So what's something that you're looking forward to tonight? Well, I'm looking forward to a victory. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Mr. Copeland, for speaking with us. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kimberly. Principal Lewis Copeland, he's been around a while. He knows the deal. He lost 27 seniors, of course, so he knows he has a young team out there with Coach Riley tonight. And it's a situation to where the new guys for the Davidson Warriors are going to have to grow up real, real quickly oh, yeah. because if they don't, it's going to put themselves in a situation. Right now, Mr. Copeland has to be very pleased with the scoreboard. Like I said, he's looking forward for a victory. Definitely. Both teams are scoreless right now. I, I, I'm a bit surprised at that, Corey. I know it's the first game of the season, but based on what happened last year, I know both of these teams lost some seniors. I thought we would see some points by now. I agree. And, and neither team has really been able to get after it offensively and find that offensive rhythm. Kawada with a nice punt there. And it takes a Daphne bounce down to about the 10, 9, 8. They're going to down at the 7-yard line. So a great punt and a nice roll for Daphne. And Davidson right now sitting up in their own backyard. We're going to say this ball is right about at the 7-yard uh, no, line, Corey. And it's going to be important right here with the ball being at the 7-yard line that the Daphne Trojans go ahead and continue to push the Davidson Warriors backwards. Don't let them flip the field on you at this point in time. So plenty of time left here, 727 in the second quarter for the Davidson Warriors to be the first team that finds that offensive momentum because like we just mentioned, both teams are struggling. And see what our offensive coordinator Ken Boatman is gonna come up with right now as they reach into the Davidson playbook. First and 10 ball on the seven yard line. Davidson with their backs against the wall. Hand off to Blunt, and he works his way and gets some good positive yards up to about the 11 or 12 yard line. Did a good job of cutting back against the grain and right into that Trojan defense. Went right into Andrew Gilbert's arms and Ty Rogers. But positive yards on first down is something that you really want to see if you're Fred Riley, and you got a chance to see it on that first down play. Second and six is what we're going to call it right now. Approaching six minutes in that second heat timeout coming up. Williams in motion. Back to Blunt again. He gets close to the first down marker, maybe picks up one or two. And all it has to be is a couple yards at a time, That's especially right. if you're able to pick up three or four yards. But you want to see that push that the Warriors offensive lines is starting to establish. Ball right about at the 14-yard line. So we'll call it third and three, Core. That's a good call, Al. And you've picked up positive yards so far by running the football, trying to blow the Trojans out of the trenches or the Davidson Warriors. And let's see if they go right back to it. Have a stoppage in play right now. It appears as if Davidson has called timeout. Coach Fred Riley wants to discuss some things, or offensive coordinator Ken Boatman wants to discuss some things. Third down and three is a great time to do so because you have an opportunity to pick up a first down because you've been running the football with a little success on this drive. If you're able to pick up those three yards, it'll be huge because that not only will the chains move, the clock will continue to run also. Absolutely. And also, this uh, timeout is pretty smart because just under six minutes, we'll get the heat timeout. Right now, let's while we have some time, let's look a look, take a look at the 7 8 preseason. Top 10, number one right there, Hoover. And if you notice, your first local team, number six, McGill Toole, they play in Region 1, Central Phoenix City. They knocked out, uh, was, I believe, Davidson, no, Daphne in the playoffs last year. Thompson, who at Trustful, Spain Park. All the way at the bottom, look, getting some votes in the poll. Murphy, 6 and 5 last year. And some of the big folks from uh, up north Alabama, Spain Park. Bob Jones, Auburn, 
That's who Davidson lost to in the first round last year right here at Last Stadium. So there's your 7A preseason top 10 right there. And of course, Hoover always the defending 7A state champion, and they played and beat McGill Tulin from Mobile, Alabama. Right. But it, it's your traditional top 10 in 7A football. Pretty much, you can say that. Beautiful night here at last, Lab People Stadium, 6.05 remaining in the half. Here's the 6A preseason top 10. Ramsey Hill, Chris, Tuscaloosa. There's Blunt, the big matchup tomorrow night. Blunt and Pritchard, we want to call it unity in the community. Also picking up votes. Daphne, number eight, and they picked up one first place vote as well. And if you look at the bottom, a couple more local 6A Region 1 teams, Spanish Ford and Sarah Land just missed out from making the preseason 6A poll. Toss out to Williams. He had room, but he is level. He may be close to the first down. We'll see where the official is going to mark it at, Corey. That was a great call by Fred Rowley coming out of that timeout. They had run the ball with efficiency and then turn around and were able to connect on that great pass and it's going to be a measurement possibly coming out they say it's going to be fourth down for the Davidson Warriors. They are calling it fourth down as the clock ticks there has not been a dead ball so at our next dead ball we will receive our heat timeout we are under six minutes and here comes the uh, kicking crew for Davidson. Fourth down and one. You have to make that great decision because you're deep in your own territory. Don't want to turn the ball over and give the Trojans a, a, a gift right there at their own seven or eight yard line. You don't want to do that. Miles setting up right about at the 49 yard line. Here's the punt from Montano. And Miles takes it right about the 45 and heads out of bounds. just tripped up right there by the Davidson Warriors. Delvin Norwood probably saved six for the Davidson Warriors because if he was able to get past him, he had that right sideline and had a convoy set up. He did, he did. So Daphne will take possession right now. And I believe this is our heat timeout at 4.58, Corey. We'll bid under six minutes, but that's a dead ball. So we'll have our heat timeout taken by the officials. Stick with us, we'll be back with more action. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Students shouldn't be scared to go into being an AP scholar because it's not how smart you are and it's not like your GPA, it's how much work you put into your classes and how much you are dedicated to your classes. Stadium. Daphne with the ball right now, taking possession ball on the 44 yard line. Franklin picks up a couple yards. That'll take us a second down, maybe five or six. Good game for Davidson. I mean, good game for Daphne, excuse me. Good and game. I can look for Franklin now to continue to receive the football right here. You're on the positive side of the field. You're in Davidson's territory to where you want to run downhill. If he's able to get past the line of scrimmage, watch that burst. Second and four. With Daphne getting that first down, pushing the ball out to the receiver and picking up the first down, number four with the reception, Christian Williams. Christian Williams is a dynamic player for the Trojans, plays both sides of the football and has an opportunity to complete that pass and move the sticks. So Daphne picking up the first down. Stick with us at halftime. We're going to be talking to the public communications officer, Renee Phillips. She's going to stop by and talk with us about some great things happening for the Mobile County Public School System. First down for Daphne. Franklin on the move. He's getting those wheels turning, Corey. And that's, he got into the secondary level, the second level beyond the line of scrimmage for the first time tonight. And you can see once he creates that hole, all he needs is that small sliver of a running lane. And if he gets that, he's able to move the sticks effectively for the Daphne Trojans. And right now, the Trojans have really found that groove that we thought we might see early in the first quarter. That's right, another first down ball at about the 16-yard line, and they're giving the rock not to Franklin. They're giving that to number six, Ray, I'm sorry, Jay Pogue. He's back in the game, and he takes that carry. And it's a great 
running back by committee, if Franklin makes the big run, it's always a great job of having somebody to back him up. Jay Poe comes in the game, and you look, it's running back by committee. After the big run by Franklin, Poe comes in and makes a run, and then Franklin checks right back into the football game. Right now is where the Davidson Warriors defense has to stand up right now. Daphne on the move. They got the momentum inside the red zone and looking to get points on the board as we near halftime. And there's a flag on the play. One of the first opportunities we've seen either team get in the red zone tonight. It's going to be about execution once you get down here, though. It will be. False start on Daphne. Listen at these numbers, Corey. Last year, Davidson wrapped up the year with a scoring average of 34.6 points a game. Daphne wrapped up the year at 30.5 points a game. And right now, they're both sitting on 0-0 zero to zero as we approach three minutes in the second quarter. After that penalty, it brings up now second down and 11 for the Trojans. Newman trying to connect on a little bubble screen, and he does. Nice spin move by the receiver to get that ball out. Number four on the reception, Christian Williams once again. Zachary Anderson on the stop for the Davidson Warriors, but we talked about Christian Williams, again, playing both sides of the football. He has offers from Michigan, Memphis, Jacksonville State, and Arizona, and with those couple of catches, we've seen why the interest is there. Third and four for Daphne as they try to get this first down. They can pick up a first down without scoring, so the pressure is not exactly on. There he is once again, Franklin, but he's brought down by a slew of Warriors behind the line of scrimmage. Tariq Williams led the attack, did a good job of slanting down from his defensive tackle, excuse me, his nose tackle position, and just red run, run all the way and created a loss for the Daphne Trojans. Big play for Davidson. We talked about it, and the defense stood up. We'll get our first attempt at some points tonight. Back to kick for Daphne, Diego. Guardado. About a 32-yard attempt. 32-yard attempt. That's right, Corey. High snap. Guardo tries to pick it up. He does. He's trying to escape and brought down. So that could be a big momentum, momentum shifter for Davidson. They needed a little lift right there, Corey, but that backs against the wall. We talked about Corey's checklist for Davidson, and one was to steal a possession in the kicking game. You just took points off the board for the Daphne Trojans. They were deep in the red zone. Right. You were able to turn them away. Great job by the Davidson Warrior defense in making sure that the Trojans kept this game zero to zero. Ball placed right at the 30 yard line. I know Coach Fred Riley and the Warriors are super excited about that. Less than two minutes remaining here. And all they have to do is keep possession of the ball to take it into halftime into the locker room. But hopefully they can get some points on the board before they do that. But that was huge, Corey, stealing that possession, just as you called it, right off your checklist. They took points off the board from Daphne there. Daphne has two timeouts remaining, so it'll be interesting to see how Kenny King, whether he decides to go to the locker room with them or use them. A little confusion there for the Warriors. Tim Johnson just ate that and just went straight down, but the clock continues to run. Does not stop. There's no dead ball there. Good stop on the play by number 55, John Dotson, the defensive lineman, six foot, 163 pound sophomore. You can see Johnson kind of hitting his chest saying, that's my fault, that's, that's on me right there. So that's good of the young man to acknowledge that. But the clock continues to move. So right now the clock is in Davidson's favor, zero to zero. Looking to try to get something on the board here if they can. Second and about 14 is the yardage. Blunt in the backfield. They hand it off to him. And he gets a couple yards up the middle trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage, Gore. What's important now is ball security for this last minute here, the second quarter. You want to make sure you hold that football very tight. And Colby Blunt made sure that he secured the, the pigskin in that situation because you don't want to turn the ball over after coming off of a huge stop by your defense. So far, no interceptions, no fumbles but you could almost say that block kick right there was almost like an interception for Davidson. Kind of got the spark that they needed as we go into halftime here. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of momentum Davidson is able to create in the locker room because a lot of the prognosticators had Daphne trouncing on the Warriors early, and so far we're at zero to zero. Coach Riley playing the clock, calls timeout with one second remaining so he doesn't pick up the penalty and the play clock. I'm sorry, not the play clock, the game clock at 22 seconds, so he calls timeout. 
you called it. They had one timeout. No need of leaving it on the board. Let's pull up your checklist for Davidson once again, Corey. We talked about stealing that possession, and you called it right on the money. They wanted to make sure that they controlled the Trojans in the trenches, and so far it's kind of been negated on both sides. Right. There's not been a, a lot of push by either teams, and you also look at stealing a possession in the kicking game that we just talked about it. Right there we talked about three points being taken off of the board because they were in the red zone. The Trojans were had an opportunity to at least attempt a 37-yard field goal and it was turned back by this great Davidson Warrior defense and also maintaining momentum. The Davidson Warriors are looking to put together back-to-back -back first down drives and try to pick up anything with back-to-back -back momentum, meaning positive yards on first down, positive yards on second down. Right. If you're able to maintain that type of momentum in the second half, you'll be able to put points on the scoreboard. That's true. 22 seconds remaining. Make sure you stick with us. Got a lot of happening at halftime. We'll be talking with Renee Phillips of the Mobile County Public School System. Also take a look at some of the bands here on display tonight. Davidson Warriors and Daphne Trojans. Just a lot happening for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Now, no, no points on the board, Corey, but it's still been an exciting matchup so far. It's the first action of high school football <laughs> of 2017, so it doesn't matter that it's 0-0. I'm just glad to see some football being played. Hand off to Williams on the jet screen. He comes across the jet sweep, rather. Picks up the first down, and that's going to move the chains. Stops the clock to move the chains, and Davison trying to put something together before they go into the locker room with 10 seconds remaining here. You talk about that jet sweep by Anthony Williams, Jr. He's the only player that you mentioned in the pregame that has scored a touchdown for the Davidson Warriors. They don't have anyone else who scored a touchdown. That's big. That's right. So Fred Riley played that one out just the way he wanted it, Corey. They mark the ball, and then the clock starts, and then it goes to zero. So we are now at halftime here with Davidson and Daphne for the MCPSS High School Game of the Week. We're going to try to get down to Kimberly Dunn on the sideline. I think she may be trying to get in contact with Coach Fred Riley. I think she may be close to having him, so we'll take it down to her momentarily. And you have to be excited that high school football is in the air. There, there's Kimberly. I believe we had her there for a second. She may hey, be Coach ready. Coach Riley, how do you feel about your team's performance so far tonight? I mean, obviously we played really good defensively and we managed the kicking game well other than the, the penalties down here. Uh, uh, because we only had 10 guys on the field, uh, you know, offensively. We finally made a first down, you know, a first one of the half. You know, I mean, we, we get excited and we're going to run up on the line and, 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 and try to go in a hurry. What are you talking about? We, we just got out of the half, you know, and, and, and did not have to punt them the ball. Uh, uh, I am thrilled to death to be nothing to nothing right now. Yes, yeah, so what does your team need to do to improve after they come out of this half? Well, we got to do a better job offensively of attacking what they're doing. I mean, they're, they're playing a, a, a seven-man box inside and playing zero coverage coverage outside and just daring us to do anything out there. And we've got to you know, find a little better rhythm offensively and, and you know, and defensively, I really can't ask more of them right now. I mean, we just got, we got to keep, keep playing and, uh, and, and, and root hard for the offense. Thanks so much, Coach. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kimberly. We do appreciate that. Stick with us. Halftime is headed your way. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week, brought to you by Spring Hill Toyota. Rehabilitation plays a vital role each day at the center, featuring more than 500 acres of rich woodlands. The center affords teachers, students, and the general public an opportunity to experience firsthand the natural environment. Environmental Study Center, it starts with us in the Mobile County Public Schools. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Right now, let's take a look at the Daphne Trojan Marching Band.
And that's the sound of the Daphne Trojans marching band. Right now in the studio with me, I have the Director of Communications, Renee Phillips. How are you doing, Renee? I'm great, Al. How are you? I am doing to stupendously super excited. It's football. High school football is back. And, and Corey and I, we just can't begin to express the joy we have. And a beautiful <laughs> night. And what I loved is when I pulled into the parking lot right. and there were cars on both sides and everyone's super excited about football starting back up. Well, we're super excited about football, but we know you are the director of communications and a lot goes on for the Mobile County Public School System. So before we get into one thing particular, what do you do as director of communications? The people at home may not know what, what you do, Renee. Well, in our communication department, we bring you this broadcast. That's part of what we do. We have our yep. MCPSS TV crew in a live truck. You're part of us for this evening. Um, we do that. We also um, monitor, we do the district social media. We do community outreach programs. We do media relations, internal communication. It's quite a lot. So we have 7,500 employees, 57,000 students. It's a big job. It's a big job. And speaking of that, some of you may notice, Renee may look a little familiar. The other day, the eclipse was going on. Let's see, were you on television, young lady? I was, and it's funny. You don't realize how many people see you, but I was in Eichhold Mertz um, Magnet School the other day, okay. and uh, three kids separate just walked up to me and said, you're the Eclipse lady. <laughs> but it was a great, we did a live broadcast in our truck. It was about an hour and a half. We brought some scientists in. We answered student questions okay. about the Eclipse. Um, it was a great experience. Um, and I think that the kids enjoyed it because they got to be part of it. So you had to prepare yourself for that to get yourself ready. And I hear the term ready, readiness, something, an initiative going on this year. Tell us more about that with, in regards to MCPSF. Okay, so Mobile County Public Schools is the first district in Alabama to join the National School Board Association in the Redefining Ready effort. That means we're saying our kids are worth more than a test score. We want them to have multiple measures to show that they are graduating college ready, career ready, and life ready. That is awesome. I know that's a big thing that uh, Superintendent Martha Peake talks about a lot about having the kids ready when they graduate to move into the workforce. What type of things go into making this program happen? Are there any different uh, lessons or any different curriculum that is being placed in the schools to impart this out to the students? Well, there, it's many, many different sides of that. And one thing is the, for the college ready, we are providing more opportunities for our students to earn college credit while they're still in high school. Mer um, Davidson has the IB program. Right. We've got dual enrollment, AP. We just celebrated the fact that we had 222 AP scholars, which means those are students wow. who earned college credit in three or more AP subjects, some in eight or nine or 10. So oh that was goodness. fantastic. And then from the career ready side, we, we are doing with our signature academies, different programs preparing students to be certified okay. nursing assistants, welders, electricians, you name wow. it. So we've, our students this past year earned 14,000 career credentials, which is oh fantastic. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Those yeah. are big numbers, and this is the, what, the largest school system in the state of Alabama. That's so right. I'm pretty sure we can handle that. Well, we appreciate you stopping by and talking about the readiness program. Also, we appreciate you uh, being on camera Monday during the Eclipse coverage as well. So uh, that was great. I had an opportunity to watch some of that along with my uh, my son and my daughter as well. So we appreciate Good. Director of Communication Renee Phillips for stopping by Thank with you. us here in the studio. And as always, you can come back anytime Thank you. <laughs> during halftime and talk with us. All right. I plan on being here in the truck somewhere, but I love football too, so this is Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Stick, stick right here. We have more coming your way. And right now, let's take it back down to the field and look at the Davidson Warriors marching band.
sounds of the Davidson Warriors marching band. Stick with us. We'll be back with a first half recap at the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I think it's a good idea for students to enroll in this program because it offers uh, a sort of new way to learn. It feels like in AP classes you're actually expected to uh, learn and apply yourself and apply the knowledge as well. It helped me to learn how to work harder. It's helped me learn my limits as a student. It sort of helped me to be more confident in myself as well as, as a student in my abilities. It started for me here at Mary G. Montgomery. Coach Garuby, you know, he's taught me a lot of life lessons on how to you know, carry myself as a person and, and strive to be the, the best that you can possibly be. Well, I'm a professional jockey. I've uh, ridden uh, multiple races, probably 1,800 races. I've won 306 races. Being here at Mary G. Montgomery definitely helped me um, become the person I am today in my career. It's a fact. Bullying happens. Bullying can lead to serious physical and emotional pain. But there are some things you can do to prevent or stop it. Stand up for the person who's being bullied. Let the bully know that it's not cool to pick on others. Take action by reporting the bully to a teacher or principal. In the end, when you help someone who's being bullied, you are also helping yourself. score zero zero stick with us we're going to also give you a first half recap but right now let's talk about what the great things are going on with mobile county public school system in regards to our teachers the reason why i started teaching was because i knew that i wanted to inspire children and at a very early age as a child i knew that teaching was my calling. The reason I chose Mobile County was because this is my home, not to mention that E.R. Dixon was also my home place to start my education as a child. So I wanted to give back to my community. As far as being a new teacher in Mobile County, um, I know especially here at E.R. Dixon, you will get professional development, you'll have a mentor, and you'll have plenty of people that you can lean on administration, coaches, math and reading coaches, intervention teachers that will all help you and you'll be working as a team to make sure that children are successful. I received professional development. I also had a mentor when I started teaching. In addition, I had my grade level so I could ask plenty of questions to all the time, <laughs> whether it be over the weekend or first thing in the morning. Um, I definitely think that we as Mobile County do a wonderful job of providing the support that you need as a new teacher, professional development, whether it be co-workers, mentors, you have a team all the time to help you and guide you through teaching. It makes you feel like you have your place, you have your home, and here I'm already at home. But just to know that when you come here you have a second family. I'm excited to be a part of Mobile County Every morning when I wake up, I'm so excited to get to school. And the most important thing is just to see my children and laugh with them and know that we're not just helping that child learn Common Core or Wonders or whatever the program is that we're following, but helping them to grow as an individual. Because these kids are going to be, whether they're here in Mobile County or in another state, we want them to be true examples of leaders and successful and responsible citizens. And when people say, where did you go to school? Mobile County. Another example of the great teaching that takes place right here at the Mobile County Public School System, remember, it starts with us. Corey, first half action, not very much going on. I know you had a chance to uh, get some statistics for us. Let's take a look back at what may have occurred in the first quarter, first two halves, rather. The teams combined for 75 yards of total offense, and that's kind of shocking when you look at the explosiveness that the Daphne Trojans have in Franklin in the running back, and Chance, the quarterback for Daphne never had an opportunity to really get into any type of throwing rhythm. There was 80 total penalty yards in the first half for both teams. Seven penalties for 45 yards for Daphne, four penalties for 35 yards for Davidson. Davidson only had 
one first down the entire first half. That's something that Fred Riley talked about going into halftime with Kimberly, and that's something he wants to correct. Davidson had 15 total plays for 13 yards. So here in the second half, like Fred Riley said, he needs for his offensive line to get that push and to establish their offensive rhythm. I'm expecting some action to take place here in the second half. You're right about that, Corey. We saw more penalty yards than total yards put up by some of the teams there. And you're right, Davidson, with that one first down. It doesn't seem like it, but they did have one first down. Davidson had, I'm sorry, Daphne had a drive going toward the end of the second quarter. And that big block, well, it wasn't a block kick, but you could say that high snap on the field goal attempt and took those points off the board for Daphne. Yeah, that's something that you don't want to see if you're Kenny King because he wanted to really focus on his team doing the job. And from the snapper to the holder, you want to execute and give your chance an opportunity, your team a chance to kick that 37-yard field goal to get any type of rhythm. I think the team that strikes here first in the second half will be the team that comes out victorious because okay. it's a bid but don't break mentality by both of these teams defensively. But I think the first team that scores and puts points on the board will ultimately come out victorious here in the second half. That's right. We're going to have a great second half coming up here as a matter of moments. Players down on the field getting themselves loosened up. We wonder if uh, Kimberly had a chance to talk with Coach Kenny King. We'll try to reach out to her just shortly. But uh, you're right, Corey, with the score at 0-0, zero to zero, we're expecting some action to take place here in the second quarter. I mean, just last year, we saw this Davidson team explode. They beat Daphne, lost to McGill, and then they ran off eight in a row to make the playoffs and lost in the first round and on the opposite side across the bay Daphne loses to Davidson they lose the Spanish for it and then they run off nine in a row and lose in the second round of the playoffs so these teams almost mirrored each other last year and ironically zero to zero the score right now Core. and you look at the Daphne Trojans we talked about Kenny King wanting to focus on Daphne definitely want to clean up those penalties but they must establish the running game and what I mean by that getting their dynamic running back to the second level. If he can get to the second level of this Warrior defense, Mike Franklin can make great things happen. Also offensively for the Trojans in the second half, you can look for their Christian Williams, the wide receiver slash cornerback, to start getting more touches for the Daphne Trojans because, again, Chance Newman, he just needs to find some type of rhythm. Right. On the flip side, the Davidson Warriors offensively, we talked about the sputtering that they've done. Tim Johnson has only thrown a couple of passes. With that being said, if you're not going to be able to establish the running game, you may look for some quick bubble screens to try to get beyond the line of scrimmage by the Davidson Warriors. But I guarantee offensively, Ken Boltman was talking to his team about, come on, guys, let's get some push here in the right, second half. Right, right, right. Just before the end of the second quarter there, you saw uh, Boltman and Coach Riley called that timeout, get the kids together. They set up that jet sweep screen for A.J. Williams to come around there, got the first down and secured it. As Coach Riley told Kimberly, he didn't have to punt the ball away before halftime. And even on Daphne's side, you mentioned it, Christian Williams and also Franklin, they started to get the legs moving, started to get that train going as we got near the end of the second quarter. So uh, I'm expecting some big things out of both teams here in the, in the third quarter here. A.J. Williams going back to receive for Davidson along uh, with with uh, the other returner and kicking duties for Daphne. Once again, Diego Gurado, he'll be kicking the ball off. So Davidson receiving as we get ready for third quarter action. You look at the kickoff returners for the Davidson Warriors. A.J. Williams has a lot of speed. This is an opportunity now for the Warriors to get beyond the 50-yard line to start the second half. How do you do that? You want to make sure that you pick up the blocks if the Trojans run the lane and try to put the uh, uh, Davidson Warriors in negative territory. Marion Collins back with A.J. Williams to receive. And here's the kickoff for third quarter action here. Great kick by Guadro. Takes it in the end zone in high school football. That's an automatic touchback, so they'll be bringing the ball out. So we'll get a look at the Davidson Warriors here in the third quarter. And offensively, Colby Blunt is playing his first starting role in a varsity situation because you talked about it, Dante Edwards, the dynamic running back for the Davidson Warriors a right. year ago is gone. So with that being said, Colby Blunt, he's a powerful downhill runner. Once he gets beyond the line of scrimmage, he's embracing that contact. If he can get positive yards on first or second down, that's something that will help the Warriors in the second half. Davidson coming out, receivers at the top and the bottom, no one in the backfield. Empty set for Johnson back here. Looks like uh, O.C. Boatman is ready to open this thing up, putting Williams in motion. 
And with the jet sweep, he is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Take about a one to two yard loss for Davidson. Take us a second down. Good job by the Daphne Trojan staying at home defensively from his linebacker position. You look at six foot one junior Andrew Gilbert on the stop. We'll call it second and 11, Corey. Right there, ball right at the 19 yard line, as you can see. Johnson looking over to the sideline for the call. He's got Blunt in the backfield for him. Early action here in the third quarter of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Hand off to Blunt, and he is met immediately, immediately behind the line of scrimmage by the Daphne Trojans. Good job by the Daphne Trojans defense, establishing the line of scrimmage for Daphne, and that creates a bad situation for the Davidson Warriors. They try to get Blunt the football, but you have to have a push at the line of scrimmage. If you're not establishing dominance at the line of scrimmage, nothing good is going to happen. And so far, the Warriors have gone backwards here to start the second half. Behind the six, third and 15 is the call. Nothing positive out of these first two plays. Johnson looking to the sideline. One man in the backfield. Rolls out and connects with the big tight end. Cameron Peoples, 6'3", 215. And that ball did not get to the line of scrimmage. I'm sorry, that reception didn't get to the line of scrimmage at all, Gore. And Cameron Peoples is one of those impact players for the Davidson Warriors. I'm surprised that they hadn't gone to him earlier. 6'3", 203-pound senior, but the Trojan defense holds tight. And that's what you look for, eight returning starters for Kenny King's defense. He's sharing defensive coordinator positions with Larry Reynolds. Good stop to start the second half for the Trojans. Back to receive for Daphne. Jaquan Miles, and we've called this young man's name tonight, Joe Montano, doing the punting for the Warriors. He puts one up. It's a bit short, but it does take a Warriors roll to about the 49-yard line of Daphne. So Daphne will get their first, get their hand on the ball first here in the third quarter and see what they can come out with. I wonder where Kenny King had to say to his crew in the locker room tonight there, Corey. I guarantee he wasn't a happy football coach, but with their first possession here, you really didn't see them come out and be dynamic. Again, I think you're going to get a big dose of Mike Franklin running the football because that's the identity of this Daphne Trojan football team. You run the ball to set up the pass, and that's something that gives Chance Newman an opportunity to do, but you must establish the run first. That was something they did toward the end of the first half, getting that ball to Franklin and also working in Christian Williams as well. And there it is, getting the ball out. Jaquan Miles, he's cutting across the middle. He's brought down. He ran about a mile to get five yards, Corey. That's a great job of getting your playmaker the football, though. Jaquan Miles on a little bubble screen decides to take it back to the inside of the football field is able to gain positive yards. More importantly, that's a completion for Chance Newman. So that anytime you can complete a one yard pass, it gives yourself a little bit more confidence out. Building confidence in the senior quarterback there. Franklin in the backfield. Daphne setting up trying to get this second down. Fakes the quick out and trying to escape and brought down. Big number 77 for Davidson on the tackle. Let's head down to the sidelines, check in with Kimberly Dunn. Hi guys, I was able to talk to one of the assistant coaches for Daphne and kind of see what the atmosphere was like in the locker room. And he said it was still very positive, very encouraging, very motivating. The coach was telling his players, hey, sometimes we get knocked down, but we just got to get back up. We got to play our best. We've got to fix the mistakes that we've been making and get out there and play a better game for the second half. Thanks, Kimberly. We appreciate that. Positive words for those young men. That's what you have to do. Get knocked down, you got to get back up, and that's what Daphne's doing right now. Negative play right there, third and seven. And we do have some early movement, and that's our first penalty of the third quarter. And that's something that I know both coaches wanted to clean up. They didn't want to see a lot of those yellow hankies, but with that being the first game of the year, we are going to see a lot of penalties in all the games throughout the state. Sometimes the least penalized team is the one who winds up winning the game, and I think we'll talk about that in tomorrow night's matchup as well. Across the state, we'll be talking about that. What big play is negated by a penalty, or when you put yourselves in long down and distance situations, that's something that makes the coaches very upset. All right, third and 12 right now. The yard to get is the Davidson 41-yard line to pick up the first down. Newman trying to escape, and he is tripped up and brought down. 
Looks like 77 again, possibly, Corey, Tyreek Williams. Tyreek Williams doing a good job from his nose tackle position, along with the pressure. Uh, he, he has a teammate that comes to his aid also, but that's very important. Anytime you pressure that pocket, don't give Chance Newman an opportunity to step up and set his feet. Can't have clear vision down the field. They're going to have to put it on the foot and punt it away. Taking a look at some of the games coming up tomorrow night. Action taking a place all across the county. We'll be scrolling those for you throughout tonight. A.J. Williams back to receive the punt for Davidson. This one a big short by Guardo. Goes out right about at the 31-yard line of Davidson. So some decent field position for the Warriors here on their second possession of the third quarter, Corey. And I tell you what, Al, this I know there's a big boxing contest that's going to take place Saturday, <laughs> but neither one of these teams are really playing rope-a-dope. They're not filling each other up, just taking the licks and taking the licks. They're truly sputtering offensively. We haven't seen that big impact play for over 10 or 15 yards. Want to thank Little Caesars tonight for providing our crew with all our Little Caesars pizza. Awesome, hot awesome. Hot pepperoni, some sausage pizza brought to the booth as well. Want to thank Mark and Christina Sinclair from Little Caesars. I took the uh, sausage route myself, Corey. It was quite delicious. Johnson airing it out, trying to get in contact with the receiver, and he does now. That's incomplete. Second down. And Corey, as I look to my left, I see some Daphne Heritage over here. <laughs> Coach Glenn Vickery is right next to us checking out his old team, the Daphne Trojans, and his son will be in town tomorrow playing the Theodore Bobcats. Wow. Northridge coming down from Tuscaloosa to give the Bobcats all they can handle. Yeah, we saw Coach uh, Derek Scott of the Viga Wolves. He was in the press box earlier as well, and I believe you saw a young man, one assistant coaches over at Spanish Fort, Tyrone Pro throw in the house as well. Second down for Davidson. Get the little screen out to Williams there. He's got some room trying to weave his way, but he can't get through the maze of Trojan defenders, Corey, and brought down for a loss. A little swing pass, and you just try to get your playmakers to football. The fastest player on the field for the Davidson Warriors was not able to get past that Trojan defense, and that's another huge stop. And like I said, it's just each other, both teams trying to fill each other out, but good job by the Trojan defense staying at home and focusing on their assignment. That's right, just like Kenny King, said, Kenny King said, stay at home, do your assignment, do your job. And that's what Daphne did right there. Third and 13, Davidson behind the sticks once again. Johnson and Blunt in the backfield, putting Williams in motion here. And they need to connect for a big one if they can. He does have a receiver. And we had some uh, movement, well, I'm sorry. We had some in, uh, interference right there. Yeah, right there, you look at the Daphne Trojan defender, Cameron Williams, on the defensive play. It's going to get called for pass interference. And with that being said, Al, that's going to be the biggest play offensively in penalty yards for the Davidson Warriors. Going to kind of flip the field for him, but that's the kind of shot that I really look for Coach Boltman to take. And he tried to air it out. Johnson did. Good defense. Right, right. No, it was not good defense. He had Crandall, but uh, and in high school football, un unfortunately, um, they won't get the penalty to where the, it's not a spot foul, but they will get the, the first down here and get the 15 yards. So at, it'll be first and 10 for at, Davidson. At this point in time, Al, you just want to move the sticks if you're Fred <laughs> Riley and the Davidson Warriors. You don't care how those chains move. As long as they're moving in a positive direction and not the down marker moving backwards, you're happy with that. The ball now on the 43-yard line of Davidson. First down after the uh, penalty there. Johnson looking over to the sideline, getting the call from the offensive coordinator, looking at the boards. Even the high school teams are using these, if you want to call them signs or deflector boards. I, I see Texas A&M and logos on the field to signify what play needs to be called. Blunt on the move outside, just outside the numbers, and he's brought down right about at the 45-yard line. Picks up maybe two or three on the play, take us a second down. Blunt did a good job of stretching that defense to the outside, got some good blocks pushing the forward momentum. Ty Reynolds steps up from his middle linebacker position as Blunt cut to the outside. And when you look at the push that the Warriors were able to get on that particular play, that's something that you'll see them go back to. I believe they'll continue to run that until they are having negative yards and in a negative situation. Second and eight for Davidson. Handoff once again to Blunt. He guts around the edge. 
and leaps out and gets two or three close to the midfield stripe, but he's going to be short of the first down. We may call this third and seven or third and six, depends on where they place it at. And we're under six minutes, so, Corey, it's now time for our first heat timeout of the third quarter at 545 right here at Ladd Stadium. Quarter's gone by pretty fast because both teams really only had a couple of penalties but are continue to try to run the football because that's what both teams really want to do. You can see neither team very comfortable throwing the football, but it's just back and forth, back and forth action for both teams. Yeah, Davidson with the ball right now, trying to keep this momentum going. Corey, they got a first down off of that penalty against Daphne, but they've got to keep things going, sustain drives with what Coach Riley told me. They have to sustain drives so they can stay in this contest. We know they don't have big bruising backs and runners like they had last year, losing 27 seniors. Even Principal Copeland alluded to that fact earlier with Kimberly. Yeah, new team, you want to establish some type of momentum on this drive. We talked about being able to put back-to-back -back first downs together. That's something that the Davidson Warriors want to do. If it's time consuming, that's fine because the scoreboard still reads zero to zero. It sure does. It sure does. So opportunity is still there for Davidson. We had a chance speaking of opportunity last year as Davidson played Fairhope here on October 6th. We watched Coach Fred Riley pick up his 100th win at Davidson. He's the win in his football coach, Corey, but also he's the longest coach in Davidson history as well. So he's a veteran. And across the field, you got Coach Kenny King in his second year with the Daphne Trojans. You look at the Davidson Warriors being 316, 256 and six all time. They've been playing football for quite a while. Third and seven is the call right now. Johnson rolling back, looking to connect, and he has Crandall. Oh, and Crandall just out of his outstretched arms and drops it incomplete, taking the fourth down. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn on the sideline right quick. Hey, guys. I was able to talk with the coaches and ask them what is going to set their teams apart tonight. And Daphne's coach, King, said, we are – conditioned we know how to have stamina throughout the game and so coming up in these last two quarters we're going to see if that really plays out if they're able to keep up that stamina for the rest of the night thank you Kimberly. you're right about that you know it is hot down here in the south Corey. so getting into the fourth quarter we're going to find out what you made out of here on high school football here in mobile montano with the punt go, gets man. a decent one off there and miles he does take it and cuts around the edge between the numbers and the hash, and he's coming up the sideline. Almost at the midfield stripe, and he is brought down hard by Jeff Marks. Big hit. Jaquan Miles, we talked about his speed at 5'10", only 140 time, uh, 40 pounds, being a sophomore. That was the most yards that anyone has gotten out of the kicking game so far. Weren't able to quite flip the field and get it beyond midfield, but you're looking for any type of momentum, something to get that Trojan crowd opposite the press box where we are excited. That's right. Speaking of Trojan crowd, good contingent came over from Baltimore County tonight for the first game, Corey. And even right here on the home side, a lot of Warrior faithful in the house as we kick off high school football. First and 10 ball on the 41, and there's Franklin on the move. Bounces off and regroups, and he is still running, Corey. Look at him go. First down, Daphne. Great run by Mike Franklin. Yards after contact. That's what we want to see. You just mentioned the conditioning programs being so very important for both of these teams. It's going to be interesting to see how Mike Franklin, as this game progresses deep into the third and fourth quarter, whether he gets stronger as the game gets toward its closure. It looks as if we may get a measurement on this. We have an official's timeout right now. Or maybe he's not motioning for the sticks, but it's close to the first down marker. They're discussing something. We haven't been able to get our head referee's microphone working tonight, so we'll see what the call is going to be. Is it second down or is it first down? Looks like it's going to be second and Looks short. Looks like it's second, but it, it's pretty close, Corey. I thought he would have brought the chains out. I and really they, would have. They are, they are going to go ahead and take time, like you just mentioned, to mark it as a first down. now it's a first down, Corey. <laughs> Just be patient, and you'll get the call. <laughs> and now they're waiting on the chain crew to go ahead and, and move the sticks 10 yards. the chain crew starting to move. All right, so it is first down and 10 for Daphne. Big run, nice run by Franklin right there. One of the best of the night, again, yards after contact, took that initial hit, was able to cut back. That might be the run that Mike Franklin needs and the spark he needs. Trips at the bottom of the screen. And off to Franklin once again. 
Not this time. Davidson stops him. There's your boy Jeff Marks in the middle of it, number 47. Jeff Marks, a defensive end at 6'3", 260 pounds, has been offered by Purdue University. And you can see the strength from his defensive end position. Did a good job of not letting Franklin bounce to the outside, held his lane down, and held containment. He did. Big play right there. Looks to be a possible loss of one. We'll call it second and 11. Lance calling it second and 10. Newman hands off once again. Franklin on the move. He picks up a couple. Get some positive yards, maybe two or three. Stopped by Gabe Johnson, the 5'9", 209-pound junior on the plate. Tackled him up high, but nonetheless was able to get the stop. I see Darian Coach checking back in for the Warriors there. Defensive end, third down, big play. Third and eight is the call right here. Daphne inside the Warriors' territory. Ball at the 39-yard line of Davidson. Newman back, and that ball is tipped at the line and knocked down. I just called his name, Darian Coates, and he comes in and gets the block on the uh, pass there, Core. That's what you like to see. You like to see him be very, very active, as Coach just was from his defensive end. He's opposite Jeff Marks. Jeff Marks lines up on the left defensive end position. Darian Coates, being long at 6'2", used his entire 213-pound frame to knock that pass down. Big play for Davidson to stop that momentum drive for Daphne right there. Back to receive A.J. Williams standing at the 10-yard line. I'm sure Gowato trying to place this one, and it goes as she shanks it. Well, I'm sorry. That's a hook. That's a pull hook, Corey. Looks like Into the stands, yeah. It looks like my golf swing, Al. It's like my <laughs> golf ball when I try to hit it off the tee box. Yeah, you don't play much golf, course. <laughs> so that was not a very good effort by the young man. Where are they going to mark this ball at? At the Davidson... 34-yard line. Wow. And we talked about it at halftime, Al. What team is going to score first? And right now with 331 remaining in the third quarter, still plenty of action left here in high school football. An entire 15 and a half minutes left, which is an eternity when you look at it. But we really want to see what team is able to establish back-to-back -back first down drives and move the sticks with consistency. All right, keep that going, keep that going. Right now, Davidson lining up ball on 35-yard line. Hand off the blunt. Thought he was going to fake it, but he stuck it in the pooch right there, and Blunt is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage again. Nowhere really to go for Blunt as he was trying to run that football. And great defense by John Dotson coming up and making a big stop for the Daphne defense. And if you want to get positive yards on first down, if you're the Davidson Warriors, now you put yourself down in second down and 13. Behind the sticks once again, Davidson's got to make some uh, good decisions right now as we approach the end of the third quarter. Score 0-0, Daphne Davidson. This is a 7A, 6A matchup. Daph Davidson, a 7A school, and Daphne, 6A school. Williams in motion. They get it out to him on the screen. He's got some room, but he's wrapped up. Brought down by number four, Christian Williams on the tackle. Swing pass by the Davidson Warriors, and we talked about trying to find a way to get your playmakers the ball, get some confidence for your quarterback and Tim Johnson, and that was done on the swing pass. It takes timing, but you have to maintain blocking from the wide receiver position. If you can't get that block and push that cornerback down the field, and he's able to shed that blocker like he just was, he was able to make the tackle for only a one-yard gain for the Davidson Warriors. He had some room, but before he could hit the hole, it closed up. You're right about that, Corey. Empty set for Johnson. The play clock down to two seconds, one second. Can he get it off? He does. He's airing it out, trying to hook up with Crandall once again. Incomplete. No flag on the coverage right there, so uh, that's incomplete for Davidson. That takes them to fourth down, and Daphne looking to uh, get the ball back once again. And we've seen a couple of times Tim Johnson has just missed the fingertips of Malik Crandall. I like the shot that they took down the field, yeah. but again, just have not been able to connect, and now they're going to rely on old faithful Joe Montano, <laughs> his foot trying to flip the field for the Davidson Warriors. You're right about that. Back to receive number two, Jaquan Miles. He's going to stay away from it. He does pick it up. He didn't call for a fair catch. He just kind of motioned to stay away, and he is on the loose down the sideline 
far sideline of the near Daphne and takes it down to about the 17-yard line on a great return. I think some of the Warriors fell asleep there, Corey, as he motioned to stay away, but the ball bounced right to him, and he picked it up and took off. Just great awareness by the returner, and in that situation, he's going to put the Daphne Trojans automatically in the red zone area. We saw them in the red zone area late in the second quarter and weren't able to come away with any points, but with this situation, now it's just going to be downhill running by the big back, Mike Franklin. You have an opportunity at the 19 or 18 yard line to get some things done. We have a timeout. Davidson calls timeout right now with a minute 39 left in the third quarter. I think Coach Fred Riley wants to discuss this with this young team and say, hey, look, I know your backs may be up against the wall right now, but we can stand up like we did the late second quarter to prevent Daphne from putting points on the board. The biggest thing that has to happen for the Davidson Warriors, they cannot allow the Trojans to continue to dominate the line of scrimmage in this red zone area. They did a good job in the second quarter of holding their own and creating a 37-yard field goal opportunity. If they don't give up any yards right here, it would make close to anywhere from a 37, 36-yard field goal attempt from this range right here. But again, can the Davidson Warrior defense show up and bow up right here and keep the Daphne Trojans off of the scoreboard? You're right, the Daphne offensive player, they're motioned over to the crowd and to their faithful, to the teammates. They're trying to get them pumped up as they are in the red zone ball at the 19-yard line. First and 10 for Chance Newman and the Trojans to try to get some points on the board. Our first points of the night, if we see any right here. Hands off to Franklin. It was kind of fumble, but a flag comes in to shut the play down. On the back, the Trojans up five yards. I do believe it's going to be a false start. You're right about that, Corey. False start on Daphne, so that takes them back five yards. Second and 10. And with big Jeff Marks standing over you <laughs> at your left guard position, you better be ready. And he'll cause you to flinch a little bit. But you get out of the red zone area. Now let's see if the Daphne Trojans can get anything positive going on first down. Fake the handoff to Franklin, and he throws and connects. Trojans on the move. Big number 32, Taylor Smith. And he picks up enough yardage for the first down as well, Corey, as Daphne extends this drive into the red zone further. Taylor Smith from his tight end position, great job by the quarterback, Chance Newman, spinning around, finding his tight end in the flat area where there was no defenders from Davidson. They got caught ball watching, great route, and they were able to establish and move the chains, now putting themselves in a first and goal situation. First and goal ball at the six yard line. Daphne trying to, trying, trying to punch this in and get the first score of the night. They hand off to Franklin. He is met immediately at the line. Number 35, Tyrese Douglas brings him down behind the line of scrimmage. Tyrese Douglas, 5'11", 161, senior, plugged the hole and did a good job. As soon as that ball was handed off, Poe just dropped immediately like a rock, a sack of rocks. And that's a good job of bowing up after giving up a big play by the Davidson Warriors. Second and, second and goal, ball on the nine yard line. I'm sorry, ball on the six is second and goal. And off to Franklin, weaving his way up the middle. He picks up a few as we inch closer to the end of the third quarter, starting the fourth here. I don't think we may get another playoff before the quarter expires, Corey. So we'll see what uh, Coach Kenny King and his crew is going to do. Yeah, he's motioning. Chance Newman back, but he sends him out onto the field. Play clock's at 20 right now. The game clock is on 10 seconds. So that's going to wrap up the third quarter here, at Corey, at Lab People Stadium. Score still 0-0 zero zero with Daphne on the move. Don't move. We're coming back with fourth quarter action, but first, we've got to hit the numbers. We're hitting the numbers. Some critics would argue that you need to finish the season strong, but others say you need a good start to get off on the right foot. However you may feel about it, the truth remains that the season is here and both of these teams want to be successful. So tonight, as we kick the season off, let's focus on the number 14. Daphne has been playing football for almost 30 years now, 
and they've captured two state titles. So it's no surprise that they're ranked in the preseason poll for a 14th time. Speaking of playing football, Daphne and Davidson have met 14 times in the regular season. And in five of those meetings, the team that scored 14 points has lost each game. Okay, let's get ready to wrap it up. I said earlier that Daphne has won two state titles. And to do that, you have to advance in the playoffs. Davidson made it last year, but lost in the opening round. If they can make it back again this year and win a first round game, it'll be the 14th playoff win in school history. And I'm sure Fred Riley would love that since he is entering his 14th year as head coach at Davidson. And that's hitting the numbers. And we're here to the numbers right here on the five yard line on the Daphne Trojans deep inside the Davidson Warriors territory. Third down and five, a big play as we're coming out of that timeout to end and start the fourth right. quarter. Can the Davidson Warriors go ahead and show themselves and play like true Warriors in this red zone You're situation? Right about that, Corey. Ball on the five-yard line, third and goal. Little quick throw to Miles right there, Jaquan Miles, and it is broken up, incomplete. So Davidson holds, and they do not give up the touchdown right there. Took a shot and passing the football on the five-yard line. The Trojans tried to change it up a little bit, showed a little play action. The run definitely sets up the pass. In the red zone area at the five-yard line, they trusted their athlete to go up there and get it in Jaquan Miles, who we've called his name a lot, but now it's going to set themselves up for the field goal. Let's watch the special teams of Daphne earlier. They had a high snap, and Guardo was not able to get the kickoff. He gets this one off almost like a little chip shot for an extra point, and it is good. So Daphne on top, three to nothing over Davidson as we start the fourth quarter here at Lab People Stadium. 22-yard field goal is what it took, and they didn't have an opportunity. They didn't have a clean snap and a clean kick to end the second quarter. Got the 22-yard field goal. They strike first blood here early in the fourth quarter. The Trojans are just happy to have three, and I still feel like the first team to score, which has been the Daphne Trojans tonight, will be the team that wins the football game. It's up now for the Davidson Warriors, like we talked about, Al put together back-to-back -to -back drives right. offensively. Whether it's your quick bubble screens, whether it's establishing the line of scrimmage, you want to see some positive plays happen for them on first down, and that's what's going to have to happen this last 11:49 to get that touchdown that Fred Riley and the Davidson Warriors want. Yeah, I know he's not happy about giving up the three points, but I'm pretty sure he'll take that better than giving up the touchdown. So you can say to a certain degree, Davidson held right there. They didn't give up the big play. The drive did. Uh, get down there with a great punt return by Jaquan Miles to set it up. So right now, uh, Coach Riley and the Warriors only give up three instead of giving up six. Let's take a look at some of the action going to take place tomorrow night as they're scrolling across the top. There's the, probably the biggest one in the area. Viger and Blunt, they'll be playing that game up at Blunt at 8 Mile. Tomorrow night, we'll be out at Baker the Hornets Nest as Murphy comes to visit Baker. We'll talk more about that game tomorrow. That's going to be a huge Region 1 matchup as well. Northridge coming down to play theater. A lot of action happening for the Mobile County Public School System tomorrow night. First weekend of high school football, Corey. Very exciting, and tonight we've got a very exciting contest to start off the season. You're right. Great kick by Duardo. Touchback and nails it all the way into the end zone. I cannot recall a high school kicker putting that in the end zone in the past two years, Corey. He's done it with a lot of consistency here tonight, and that's very important because, again, it makes the Davidson Warriors start at their own 20-yard line, make them drive the length of the field, and try to even get past the 50-yard line. It's going to be important for the Davidson Warriors right here on offense. Ken Boatman to get some type of offensive rhythm in his play calling. If the guys are able to execute, then we'll see that type of rhythm that the guys know they're capable of doing each and every day in practice. Yeah, we've seen them with the swing pass, little bubble screen. They just they can they can execute and complete it, but they just can't se seem to pick up that extra two to three yards on plays like that. And they've gone deep to Crandall a time or two and not able to take advantage of them. So let's see what Davidson comes up with right now. Johnson reaching over the top, trying to get in contact with Paul James, and there's a flag coming in. Flag coming in, look like that's gonna be against Daphne. And I like that call. Paul James, the 5'10", 171 pound wide receiver, tried to go up and get that football, but wasn't able to do so because of the pass interference. Now, when you look at the Davidson Warriors, their two biggest plays offensively have been all pass interference calls right. by the Daphne Trojans. 
nonetheless, the sticks move, so that's very important for the Davidson Warriors. It's the first down. You're right about that. First time us calling Paul James' uh, name and number tonight. They've gone to Crandall a few times with that same exact play. But I like the play call on first down. You go for the big shot, and the worst thing that can happen is what happened, something positive for the Davidson Warriors. Williams in motion on the jet sweep. He's got, a room, got some room, picks up maybe two or three as he turns the corner. Takes Davidson to second down. And keep in mind, Corey, we've talked about how quick and the pace of how the game has flowed tonight. We're approaching 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And I think Coach Fred Riley and his, and his coaches know we need to put some points on the board right now because if we get the ball back, we, I mean, sorry, if Daphne gets the ball back, we may not get it back at the pace of how the play has been going tonight. That's why it's so important to establish some type of tempo offensively and create positive plays on first down. Blunt in motion, they fake it to him. Johnson trying to escape, he's got some pressure. He does have a receiver. And Blunt drops it incomplete. Takes us the third down. Blunt was coming out of the backfield, trying to slip and be unknown, but Daphne's defense stayed at home, did their job, didn't go for the play fake, and they weren't able to come away with it. Put now at Davidson, third down and seven, Big play coming up for the Davidson Warriors. Yeah, this is a big play, Corey. You're right about that. At the 10.55 mark of the fourth quarter, might want to jot this down. Big call right here for Davidson. Ball on their own 38-yard line, trying to get a first down to keep this drive going. Johnson rolling out to the near side here. Trying to look. He airs it out. He has a man, but it's out of bounds, and that is actually intercepted. Yes, it is in bounds. Intercepted by Daphne. Number nine, Khalil Johnson gets the pick at about the 13-yard line. Khalil Johnson, from his free safety position, was able to get the interception. But I see the white hat coming back. I'm not sure if there's a flag on the play. But as the officials are discussing it, looks like there may be a flag on the play. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Whoa, that's a big one. That's a big one. So that will nullify, nullify that interception, for. And that's the type of break that the Davidson Warriors definitely created by being aggressive offensively on third down and seven. Now, if they're able to move these sticks again, you're looking at 30-plus yards, free offense, essentially. You're doing a good job of trying to execute the game plan, but with that personal foul roughing the passer as he, Tim Johnson, threw the football, a little bit undisciplined for the Daphne Trojans. Second time on this drive that a penalty has saved Davidson and also given them a first down as well. So as I talked about putting that down and marking the time for the interception, it actually turns around and that turned into an interception uh, nullification. Blunt picks up one or two for the Warriors there. Ty Reynolds on the stop, but again, positive yards. Even if it's just one or two per carry, he's gonna get one Hard-earned yard on that run is going to make it second down and nine for the Davidson Warriors. Approaching a 10-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Davidson on the move trying to get some things going, and there is a flag right there with that handoff to Blunt. I believe they may have had a little motion going on there, Core. Yeah, I saw a lot of movement prior to the snap, and that means the stripe saw it also. It's going to be an illegal shift called against the Davidson Warriors, and that's going to cost them five yards and now put them behind the sticks, and instead of second down at nine, put them down at second down and 14. That's right. So just as Davidson going forward, they go backwards here with this illegal shift. There's a call from our official right there. So the penalty has been declined, Corey. So it will be third down. Daphne declines the penalty. Interesting decision by Coach Kenny King there. Still behind the sticks of the Davidson Warriors. They're continuing to keep Colby Blunt as the lone offensive running back in that pistol set. Third and 13. Johnson rolling out. He has one receiver, but he overthrows him. Incomplete. So that takes Davidson to fourth down. 
And you look at the Davidson Warriors, they're definitely taking their long shots down the field, have not been able to really find anything in the intermediate level. Everything has been rolling out to the left or the right for quarterback Tim Johnson, just trying to create things with his feet. He's been tagged a couple of times on personal foul situations, but now that you're at fourth down and 13 right at midfield, you're not in no man's land because you want to try to flip the field with the punting situation. And Montano, he can definitely do that. He can definitely put some leg into it. Back to receive for Daphne. Once again, Jaquan Miles, that last return he had set them up for the field goal that gave them the lead at three to nothing right now. Good kick by Montano. And it's brought down right about at the 20 yard line down by Davidson. So decent punt from Montano right there. It pretty much puts Daphne right as if they're getting a touchback ball on the 20 yard line. Biggest possession of the game for the Daphne Trojans and the Davidson Warriors are right in front of us, Al, because what the Davidson Warriors must do is keep the Trojans from moving the sticks. That 22-yard field goal made, makes a difference in tonight's contest, but with that being said, you have to try to find stops early and often if you're the Davidson Warriors. Yes, you do. It's first and 10, ball on the 20. Daphne looking to keep possession and add to their lead. Across the middle, Newman gets the ball out and does connect. Connects with his receiver, number 80, Nick Sedano. And he's going to him a couple of times tonight, and that's a nice completion. You pick up positive yards, it's going to bring up a second down and short for the Trojans. And when you're in second down and short, what better person to give the ball to than your big bruising back, Mike Franklin? Yeah, they have relied on him a lot tonight. We'll call it maybe second and two right here. Good situation for the Trojans. Ball at right about the 28-yard line. Looking to keep the drive going and pick up another first down here. Look at the patience of the Trojans taking all the time off the uh, play clock. You're right about that. Franklin tries to escape, and he cannot. The Warriors team up, and they bring him down with a gang tackle. That's a negative loss for Daphne there. They did not need that at that time, Corey. The initial hit by Darian Coates from his defensive end position did a good job shedding the blocker and getting positive yards upfield and getting into that backfield, not learning, allowing the Trojans to get north and south running the football. Takes them back two or three. We'll call this one third and five. You called it earlier when they got the ball at the 20. Big possession, but right here a big play to try to keep this drive going. Newman rolling out, trying to find someone. He just dumps it off so he's not sacked or brought down to not take a significant loss. So third down, the Davidson Warriors defense holds there, Corey. And that's a great job by the Davidson Warriors defense. That's the stop that they ultimately needed that they did get. Now here on the punt return, hopefully they're able to turn some type of – get some type of great blocking, get some type of return here to set yourself to where you're not on the – negative side of the 50-yard line. You want to try to get into Trojan territory. What better way to do that when your offense is struggling than on a return? Here's a punt. Williams waiting for it. He does catch it and comes up the middle, picks up a couple yards, still running, had his feet going, and the Warrior faithful getting excited as he comes across the half, half uh, halfway mark of the field, 50-yard line, brings it up to the 45 of Daphne. So not a very long return, but a positive return for Davidson. And the Trojans thought that his knee had hit the ground. You have to play to you hear a whistle. And in that situation, <laughs> they didn't hear the whistle, so he kept churning those legs, getting positive yards, flipping the field, getting into Daphne Trojan territory. Now it's going to be very important. The Davidson Warrior defense cannot go right back out on the field. The offense of the Davidson Warriors must go ahead and sustain some type of drive here with 8-10 remaining in the fourth quarter. You're right. Let that defense catch a rest right there. Williams in motion, they give it to him, and he's trying to cut back and met once again by Daphne and brought back for a huge loss. Tackle him at the 50-yard line, game tackled by a host of Daphne Trojans. And with that being said, that's not what you want to see on first down in this particular possession for the Warriors. I'm surprised they didn't go with the big shot like they did on the last possession, Corey. You talked about it. Took the big shot, got the penalty, got a first down, tried to get it going. So with that uh, little jet sweep there, didn't quite work out to their advantage. Took about a six or seven yard loss right there. First and 17. And we have a stoppage. 
Timeout by Daphne. Coach Kenny King and his staff calls timeout court with 7.23 remaining in the ball game. That's going to bring up second down and 17 after we come out of this timeout. And what's going to be interesting to see what the Davidson Warriors are trying to come up with at this point in time in that huddle. Let's take it down to the sidelines, check in with Kimberly Dunn once again. Hey guys, I was able to talk to Daphne's coaching staff and ask them how they felt about finally getting some points on the board here tonight. And of course they said they're excited that they finally got some points, but they said it's still anybody's ball game. There's over seven minutes left in this game, so they're not going to start settling down and really getting excited until they have the for sure win for the night. Thank you, Kimberly. You're right about that. Got to keep those emotions in check. They're just up three to nothing, but who knows what could happen at a game like this, Corey. You have to be ready at all times because a fluke play, a penalty, or anything, and this game could go in an entirely different direction. Yeah, a year ago we had a shootout. The final score was 35-28 to 28 in favor of the Davidson Warriors. Tonight we're only at 3-0. to zero. You can see the new identity of both of these teams right. with so many seniors lost and so many new players being in effect. And it's a matter of getting out the first game jitters. And you're seeing both teams with a lot of penalties. And not only with a lot of penalties, just not a lot of positive offensive yards being able to sustain back-to-back -back drives. You're right. Just like uh, we saw earlier, da uh, I'm sorry, Davidson picking up most of their yards from penalties that Daphne has committed on big plays, trying to go over the top, pass interference, uh, things like that. So I know there's some work to do for both of these teams. You know the biggest improvement always comes from week one to week two, and Daphne next week facing, facing Spanish Fort, they may have some work to get themselves ready as well, Corey. I haven't heard a coach in America who has not said exactly what you just mentioned, Al, from week one to week two. I know we're still focused on week one right here and improving, trying to get first downs, or the Davidson Warriors – Big play call on second and 17 coming out of this it timeout. It sure is. Ball right at the midfield stripe, second and 17. Johnson in the empty backfield, blunt in motion, and they fake it to him. He's looking to get that ball out. Tries to connect with A.J. Williams across the middle and just past his outstretched hand. And that's one that he would like to have back, A.J. Williams, that is, because he was open in the flat. We talked about not being able to connect in that intermediate area, that five- to seven-yard passing radius, because they've taken the big shots along the sidelines, have the Davidson Warriors. But A.J. Williams was open that particular time. Sure was. And Johnson was kind of pressured on the throw, couldn't kind of square his body up and get his feet set, thus leading to the incomplete pass. There was a flag on that play as well, Corey, so we'll get our head referee to give us the call on what took place. It may be going against Daphne. Looks like a legal man downfield. So that will uh, – I'm sorry, not against Daphne, but against Davidson. So they'll take them back five yards, and we'll replay that one. And that normally happens anytime your quarterback gets and scrambles outside of the pocket and breaks containment, and that's exactly what happened in that situation. So it's second and 22 right now for Davidson. Blunt with the ball. He has some room getting up the middle, trying to get some of those yards back. Gets it back to the midfield stripe. Ball at the 50 right now. That'll take us to third down for Davidson as the clock continues to tick, Corey, as we're approaching seven minutes here left in the ball game. Because you're behind the sticks in this deep third and 17 situation, It'll be interesting to see if they decide to take the shot and where they decide to take the shot because most certainly you wouldn't expect the running play unless it's from the quarterback with his own feet. Here we go, third and 17. Johnson trying to connect, but he's going to keep it, and he is tripped up and brought down by Daphne, number 10, bringing him down there. We've called his name a time or two, and not Andrew Gilbert. Does a good job of staying home and spying on the quarterback because we talked about how are they going to try to get that first down? Was it going to be with the quarterback's feet? He decided that nobody was open. Designed quarterback draw went ahead and took it up the middle. Not much there. Going to bring up a fourth down and punting situation for the Davidson Warriors with the clock still ticking. Jaquan Miles back to receive. Looks like he's trying to set up maybe about the 10 or 11 yard line of Daphne to receive this punt. That one goes off the side of Montano's foot and caught by one of the trainers on the Warrior sideline right at about the 30 as the official comes up, 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 still walking, still walking. He's going to mark it at the 32-yard line of Daphne. So Montano shanks one, probably his worst punt of the night. Overall, he's done very well throughout the night, Corey, but right there, not a good opportunity to do it. We have a stoppage in play 
and I believe this could be our heat timeout as well at 556. We'll be right back with more action. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week brought to you by Spring Hill Toyota. I think it's a good idea for students to enroll in this program because it offers uh, a sort of new way to learn. It feels like in AP classes you're actually expected to uh, learn and apply yourself and apply the knowledge as well. It helped me to learn how to work harder, it's helped me learn my limits as a student. It's sort of helped me to be more confident in myself as well as, as a student in my abilities. We hope you're enjoying coverage of MCPSS Sports tonight. For more shows about Mobile County Public Schools, watch our 24-hour channel, MCPSS TV. It's available on Comcast Channel 15, AT&T U-verse On Demand, Channel 99, Roku Boxes, and, of course, MCPSSTheWire.com. First and 10 for Daphne, 556, Corey, remaining in the ball game right now. Coach King and the Trojans, they're sitting in a good spot here. Yeah, Davidson Warriors only have two timeouts remaining with that heat timeout already being burned up. They're going to have to not allow the Trojans to get a first down. A little fake, and he's trying to connect with his receiver out there, number four, and it's a, a, going to be some interference right there, trying to connect with Christian Williams, I believe, and he's tripped up, Corey. We saw Christian Williams with a couple of bubble screen passes in the first half. Right. They tried to go right back to him. Christian Williams, we haven't called his name a lot besides the couple of passes that he's received in the first half, but he plays both ways for the Daphne Trojans. He also plays basketball, runs track, and he's been offered again by Michigan, Memphis, Jacksonville State, Arizona. So we know he has playmaker ability, and that's one of the reasons that they took that shot to Christian right there. Yeah, complete athlete. That gives Daphne a first down ball at the 42-yard line. If Williams hadn't been tripped up, Corey, I think he would have taken that one to the house if he had caught it. Daphne still passing right now. Getting that ball out to Taylor Smith. He picks up the first down as he lumbers across the uh, gridiron there, Corey. And I like the fact that you're going to the tight end. We know the tight end is normally used for blocking, but any time he's able to catch the football, that's always a bonus. Somebody always has to account for the tight end. And in that situation, the Davidson Warriors defense was not able to do it, even though they had four or five defensive backs on the play. Now with Daphne on top right now, three to nothing, one would think maybe they would run and keep the clock going, but Coach Kenny King and his staff, they're doing high possession passes, keeping the ball in bounds, little dink and dunks, so they can still retain possession, but stay in bounds as well and keep possession of the ball. Second and one in a good spot right now for Daphne. Newman still trying to connect, and he does. Gets the ball across the middle, trying to pick up a first down. Reached out to number 80, Nick Sedano. And he takes possession, but we do have a flag on the play. So let's see uh, what the call is before we move forward. Legal man downfield, Corey, so that one will be coming back. And that's just a mental mistake by the Daphne Trojans. You right. know what the play call is. You know it's a, a passing call that was uh, called by the offensive coordinator. And we have co-offensive coordinators for the Daphne Trojans, James Moore and Joseph Horn, both in their first year as coordinators for the Daphne Trojans. But I like the play calling right there. It's kind of unorthodox. You've gone with back-to-back -back passes when the other team is expected to run and for you to kill the clock. But in this situation, without the penalty, the Trojans have done so far so good. We'll call it second and six for Daphne right now. And they're trying to keep the drive going. A little screen there for Miles. And he is off and close to picking up another first down. I believe it's going to be down right about the 47, 46 yard line, Corey. But what you've seen is Chance Newman get into an offensive rhythm, throwing the football. And we know that the run sets up the pass, but they've come out and called three or four pass plays in a row. Tyrese Douglas look, looks as if he's a little dinged up there, laying down on the field, have the trainers checking him out. We're under six minutes, 5-19 remaining in the ball game. And one thing I can say tonight, Corey, the game has gone by pretty quick as we've noticed. But I would, if I'm thinking back, this is probably maybe the first injury timeout we've had tonight. So that's a good look for the first game of the season. One of the things that you normally see a lot of in week one are a lot of penalties and a lot of cramping. There we have our first injury, though. You're right. Stick with us. We'll be back with more action. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week.
It's a fact. Bullying happens. Bullying can lead to serious physical and emotional pain. But there are some things you can do to prevent or stop it. Stand up for the person who's being bullied. Let the bully know that it's not cool to pick on others. Take action by reporting the bully to a teacher or principal. In the end, when you help someone who's being bullied, you are also helping yourself. Welcome back. It looks as if Douglas gets up off the field on his own strength there, Corey, and comes over to the sideline. Always good sportsmanship when a player goes down. The opposing team and the, the other team as well, they take a knee and take the helmets off to show respect as well. So it's always a good sign of sportsmanship here in high school football. Yeah, it's something that you really like to see and something the Alabama High School Athletic Association really emphasizes is great sportsmanship. You never like to see anybody go down to it an injury and like you said Al, thank goodness it's only been our first right. one of the night. Our first one of the night there. First to ten, Daphne still on the move, ball on the Davidson 46 yard line, 5-11 remaining in the contest. And Davidson trying to hold tight, there's the handoff to Big Franklin. He picks up five or six, maybe seven possibly. One of the things that you're seeing with five minutes remaining here in tonight's contest is this Davidson Warrior defense has been on the field for quite a long time because Davidson's offense has not been able to sustain any type of offensive drives. With that being said, if the defense continues to stay on the field, they're just going to wear them down. They've been able to establish the running game a little bit, have the Trojans, but more importantly, on this drive, they've been effective passing the ball. Second and four is what Lad's going to call it. I agree with that as well. And it looks as if they're going to give it off to Franklin again. He's going to the wide side up the middle. Picks up two or three. He's close to the first down, depending on where the mark will be at. And that'll take Daphne to third down if he doesn't pick up the first there. Looks like it's going to be third down and one. With four of ten remaining here in the fourth quarter, you come up to third down and one. You have to have a stop here if you're the Davidson Warriors. If you do, you might want to burn that time out to save some time on the clock because with you trailing three to zero, time is very, very precious for the Davidson Warriors. But tonight's biggest play is happening right before us right now. Al. You're right. They're, they're too far away to kick a field goal and probably too far away to punt it. So if Davidson stops them right here, we could see Daphne possibly go for it on fourth down. Well, let's see what the outcome is. Hand off to Franklin again. He's hit. But did he fall forward enough to get the first down? The side judge, it's going to be very close. I think we may have a measurement here, but from where I'm sitting, looks like the side judge, it's going to be very, very close. They're going to give it to him. He got it by the nose of the football. There it is. First and 10, Daphne Trojan. The sticks are moving. You're right, Corey. So that was a big play right there that Davidson need to have stopped, and they could not. They got the hit, but it wasn't enough to bring him down. But the unfortunate part about that play for Davidson, the clock continues to tick as we approach three minutes remaining in the contest. Now with two timeouts remaining in 3-10 left in the fourth quarter, any stop that you have, you wouldn't think the Trojans would throw the football. They're definitely going to take all the time off the play clock. That will go into Jay Pogue right there. Backup running back. He's just trying to weave his way and trying to fall down in bounds, not going out of bounds, but there was a flag on the play. Might have been a hold late over there by the wide receiver as the cornerback was trying to shed the block, was not able to get off of it. Right. One of the reasons he probably wasn't able to get off of it because he was being held. There's the call holding against Daphne, so that would bring that one back. Does stop the clock for Davidson, though. That gives them a slight reprieve right there. It does, and that's a big play because now it puts the Trojans behind the sticks here on first down. They will replay the down, bringing up a 10-yard penalty. So with that being said, Al, it does effectively help the Davidson Warriors because you don't have to burn that time out, and he's trying to step out of bounds also. From the spot is what they're going to the call. Spot I was wondering because they hadn't moved it back that far, so it's first and seven. First and seven for Daphne. I was wondering that same thing, Corey. Yeah, he had already picked up the first down, so it will be first down and seven yards to go for the Trojans. And Chance Newman letting that play clock run down as the game clock runs as well, ready to take the snap. Hands off to Franklin, weaving his way through a couple Warriors defenders and picks up one or two. 
Marks does a good job getting into the backfield. Jeff Marks, that is. Also for the Davidson Warriors, Tyrese Douglas tries to cut the legs out of the big back. Mike Franklin try not to let him get any positive yards and bring up again second down and short. Be interesting to see when the Davidson Warriors call the timeout because they have two remaining on the board. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Ray Riley is not going to leave those on the board down 3 nothing. He can get pretty creative with some play calling. So second and seven, probably a huge one right here. If they can get a stop, I'm sure Coach Riley may call a timeout right here to set up third down. Chance Newman showing his senior leadership. But right now, out of the game, we have a Wildcat formation with Franklin taking the ball core. And that snap is fumbled. Watch play by Daphne. Davidson jumping on it. I wonder if Coach Riley is going to call timeout, and he has motion to the official. He has called timeout, Gord. That's one of the things. Anytime you bring in a Wildcat situation, a, a center not used to that cadence of that quarterback, not a clean exchange from the center. It's a low snap, and that's one of the things that you risk when you do go into the Wildcat position. If it's a clean snap, he gets a running head start. But right. because it was bobbled, Fred Riley's able to call his second time out of the half. They're now going to put the Trojans in a third down and nine situation. Do the Trojans right here decide to pass the ball? Because if they don't get the first down and they don't complete the pass, it essentially stops the clock and adds another timeout That's to the right. Davidson Warriors. I would like to see him run the football right here because what that would do would make the Davidson Warriors waste their final and last remaining timeout. And if they are able to bow up and get a stop, what that also does is put this offense of Davidson back on the field correct, and correct. make them drive the length of the field. So a little bit of chess and checkers going <laughs> on right now. Strategy definitely in effect here late in the fourth quarter at Ladd Stadium. definitely is. Quite an interesting call. Daphne May right there got a little exotic and it didn't pay off the way they thought it would. So uh, we'll find out how much of, of a penalty that may turn out to be. We're going to call this third and eight. I'm going to call it third and well, maybe third and a long eight, Corey, from where we're looking at right here. Chance Newman back in the ball game. And they have Pogue set up behind him. Not Franklin, but Pogue is set up the bigger running back for the Trojans. So let's see what the call is going to be here. Newman letting the play clock run down, but the game clock isn't moving with that being a penalty. There's a handoff to Pogue, and he just kind of does a little two-step and falls down. And Coach Riley immediately calls for the timeout. Willie Manuel IV did a good job of getting into that backfield, causing disruption on the play. And he's done a good job of being active tonight. He's a defensive back, crept in from his dime position, making the stop on the play. With that being said, 120 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Going to bring up a long fourth down, maybe fourth and nine and a half for the Daphne Trojans. They're not really in field goal range. So no, that was not. a big stop for this Davidson Warrior team. But... They have no timeouts remaining now. But seeing the kicker that they have, Diego Guerrero, left-footed kicker, he may get a little creative. Uh, he did shank one of them. I'm sorry, he hooked one earlier. Uh, but if he could get one high enough, maybe just get some hang time and come back down. But on the same token, they're, they're too far away to kick a field goal. But in essence, I mean, I'm sorry, too far away to kick a field goal, but not close enough to do a punt. So uh, it's it's it's. It's a good decision right here that's got to be made by Daphne if they want to continue to do this. And they're going to add four seconds to the game clock. The White Hat has asked that 124 be put on the game clock. So four additional seconds, four additional precious seconds. Now we're in the two-minute offense situation for the Davidson Warriors. Right here, they're going to have to make sure that they feel the punt or don't give in to the fake. That's important also. Stay home, watch for the fake. And I wouldn't be surprised if the left-footed could kicker doesn't try to run some time off the clock in his kicking motion as well. I wouldn't be surprised as well. He has a lot, a lot of yardage to work with here on the near side of the field. He's on the far hash, but he is he's a left-footed kicker, so running to the right and kicking would not work. They did put the four seconds back on the clock. So here it is. Guerrero, he gets it off. And almost down by Daphne, the player did catch it and throw it down, but it went into the end zone, so that's an automatic touchback. 
Roll of the dice by Coach uh, Kenny King. They almost paid off, Gore. Well, here's what's going to have to happen for the Davidson Warriors. You know they have to go 80 yards to get the touchdown, but they also have Mr. Reliable, Joe Montano, who's an outstanding kicker. We mentioned at the top of the show, he only missed one point after attempt That's last right. year. was perfect from field goal range. We're three to nothing, but with 116 remaining, this – Davidson Warrior offense cannot afford to sputter. You work on it every single day in practice, the two-minute drill. They're going to have to execute it to perfection here to get on the board. Let's keep in mind they've tried to reach Crandall a few times and also Paul James once going downfield, but just past their outstretched fingertips, incomplete. Johnson throws it out again, and that one is thrown out of bounds, actually, not intended for anyone. We was trying to reach a – blunt, but he threw it out of bounds, so that's second down. Well, something that you definitely want to do if you're Tim Johnson is you want to keep the ball in the field of play. You know, you're, you're still not hurting your team at second down and 10 because you look at the situation, 14 seconds run off the clock, but also, Al, it's very, very important that if you do catch the football, that you quickly get your team up to the line of scrimmage to run the next play. That is true. I wonder if some, uh, some screens or some some quick swings like right here may work, but you have to get out of bounds if you're Williams. You have to break that tackle and move quickly. Try to pick up some quick yards if you can. We're under a minute right now. Textbook tackle by Ty Reynolds, not letting him get away from him and gain those extra yards. Now third down and eight for the Warriors. Johnson take the snap, looking out, trying to connect, escapes the pocket. Almost had it to Paul James in. I'm sorry, not Paul James, A.J. Williams in and out of his hands, incomplete. It stops the clock, but it takes the Warriors to their last hope, fourth and eight right now, trying to get a first down. You have no timeouts remaining if you're the Davidson Warriors. You have 38 seconds remaining on the game clock. So you've gone and taken your shots on first and second down. That intermediate route that you just ran really needed to be completed to get yourself in a fourth and short, but this is going to be the biggest play of the game for the Davidson Warriors. Coming down to this, fourth and eight, play clock down to less than 10 seconds. Johnson still looking over to the sideline. Steps up in the pocket and rolls out. He has some room, releases it, and it is too high for A.J. Williams incomplete. Ball over on downs to Daphne, Corey. And that was a good job of Tim Johnson buying extra time with his feet, trying to come up with the completion to his go-to guy, Anthony Williams, Jr. You see Fred Riley on the sidelines continuing to applaud That's his right, team right. with the effort and stay positive yep. with his new quarterback and his new situation. So, again, we talked about it losing so many seniors, but what a gutsy effort tonight by the Davidson Warriors coming up with that big stop, giving their offense an opportunity to get more points on the board, and you're looking for the Trojans to take the knee. You're right about that, Kerr. I was just about to say it. He took the words out of my mouth. First thing Coach Riley did was clapping his hands as he came off the sideline, continuing to encourage his young team here. And Chance Newman takes the knee in the victory formation as Daphne looking to wrap this one up and getting their first win of the season. And that will probably be our last play of the game. Coach Fred Riley all, all the way out to midfield already looking to shake Coach Kenny King's hand. Coach Kenny King's hand there, Corey. Well, you look at this situation for the Daphne Trojans, a top 10 team in 6A, really sputtered and struggled offensively. The Davidson Warriors have a new offensive identity. They're going to continue to work hard to get ready for their next matchup next week against McGill Tulin, which is a huge region game. Yes. But to start the high school football season three to nothing, kept the fans around and didn't have the fans sitting on their hands. We didn't have the type of shootout we did one year ago, but a great football game to start the 2017 football season tonight at Ladd Stadium. You're right about that. Uh, I would have to say if we had to give out some MVP awards, it may have to go to the kickers and the punter. Uh, Joe Montano did a fine job, special teams, but also Diego Gorguero for Daphne. He got the winning points, the field goal there, and, and could have had some more points, but they had a high snap early in the second quarter there. 22-yard field goal was the difference in tonight's contest. And, again, you have to applaud both teams. You expected both teams to struggle offense. 
offensively. We saw a lot of penalty yards in tonight's contest, but teams like you mentioned, Al, will have teams to get better from week one to week two. Let's take it down to the uh, field right now. Kimberly done with winning coach Kenny King. I'm here with Coach King. How did you feel about your team's performance tonight? Um, you know, we, we came up with a win. Uh, it was a tough first game, uh, playing on the thirds this early. Uh, but, uh, you know, they pulled it off. I mean, we got to go back. We have a lot of work to do. Uh, but we, you know, we've got one game down, and we got, now got to get ready for Spanish Fort. Yeah. What are some things that you were going to work with your team on to prepare for next week's game? Uh, just making sure the mistakes. Uh, we had a lot of penalties here tonight. Uh, we got to get that corrected. All right, thank you so much, Coach. Great right, game tonight. Thank you, Kimberly. Great job on the sidelines talking to winning coach there, Kenny King. We do appreciate everything that uh, he did, the Daphne Trojans, for coming over. Great game tonight. And I'm going back to the words I said earlier, Co uh, Corey. He said, do your assignment, and we have to hustle. And I can see Daphne showed a lot of that hustle in doing their assignments tonight. Yeah, they avenged the loss for one year ago, if you could call it avenging, because teams don't forget the last year's game. Even though it's new faces in new places, the result was a little bit different. Now Kenny King is one. 1-0 to start the year. The Davidson Warriors, though, you have to tip your cap to Fred Riley with his new squad offensively, a new identity. They're going to clean some things up also, but 3-0, to zero, if you were to tell me that would be our score, I would say, is that the end of our first quarter score? Not our final score tonight, but again, great high school football action. Glad to get back at it. I know the coaches and the fans are glad to have high school basketball excuse me, high school football back here in the Mobile Baldwin County area. Yeah, we sure are, Corey. We appreciate you joining us tonight. For Kimberly Dunn on the sidelines, Corey LeBound and myself, Al Whedon, the entire MCPSS TV network crew, we enjoy you. We thank you for joining us tonight as we unwrap that first early Christmas present with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Join us tomorrow night. We're taking it out to the Hornets' nest. It's Baker hosting Murphy for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Spring Hill Toyota. Good evening.